So, once again, hello to everyone. Let's give a round of applause to us uh, because we are here and we are finally all together. This is our first conference uh, during the past uh, two years, and this is an international one. Probably you have already heard that, well, there is some whisper. This is actually interpreted, interpreted for us because we have a lot of foreign guests today. My name is uh, Pavel Filipov, and uh, today I would say that I'm going to be like a host and a moderator, and uh, also we'll be sharing some very interesting information. Also, Sergei Semenov, the director of Solar Group, will take the floor, a uh, representative uh, of Solar Marsh, Alexander Sudri, and uh, you have seen uh, him many times uh, during different uh, sessions. Uh, we will also be joined by people developing different technologies. For example, Viktor Aristov, Andrei Lobov, uh, they will join us online. And of course, Pavel Shatsky, he will tell us a few words about our financial results, about figures. And uh, also, we are going to share information regarding the number of uh, the shares that we actually have sold. Uh, we will give you this information during the second part of uh, our events. We are going to have three and five hours. We're also going to have a lunch break at 2 or 3 uh, p.m. approximately. And after the lunch break, we will proceed to the second part where we'll be talking about figures. And also, we will give the floor to our national partners, national leaders, uh, the strongest leaders. And they will tell us why actually our project is uh, really interesting uh, for their countries. I think that you will be interested in that. So, Sergei Semenov, I would like to invite you to the stage so that you can tell us a few words. Hello to everyone. Thank you, Pasha. Well, uh, we are sorry for a short delay. Well, every day we are preparing for this conference, uh, I think about what I should share with you. Well, nothing special for today. Our team has already grown and uh, we have uh, a lot of uh, other speakers. Uh, uh, I mean, there is really nice and interesting for you. So. I that is why I will only say a few words, uh, welcome words uh, for you. You know that uh, conference is called International, and uh, probably we could really be proud of that. Uh, I would like uh, to welcome uh, every country. Uh, we have uh, representatives of uh, a lot of countries here, and uh, since uh, I'm from Russia, I would like to welcome guests from Russia. Further on, I would like to welcome friends from India, friends from Nepal, or oh, probably, I mean, uh, those are from Nepal, you can also stand up to your feet, uh, well, just stand up to your feet so people can actually welcome you. We would like to welcome our guests from Vietnam. Friends from Bulgaria, friends from Ecuador, friends from Venezuela, friends from Colombia, friends from Peru. Friends from Benin, friends from France, our guests from Nigeria, guests from Cameroon, Guests from Togo, guests from Senegal, dear friends, I was given a, a very long list uh, and you know that we have uh, 16 countries, but in fact we have even more participants, uh, uh, but not all of them uh, could make it uh, here to this event. In 2017, what did you say? Sorry. Oh, I did mention it. I'm really sorry. Uh, Germany, yes. We also have uh, guests from Germany.
Wait, wait. And from India. Well, great. What did you say? From Como? What did you say? I didn't hear. How did you pronounce that? Oh, from Nepal. If uh, Gabon, I'm sorry, Gabon. Well, I guess that uh, here we also have guests from Ukraine, Belarus, and so on and so forth. Uh, well, I'm going to mention them, of course. Uh, yes, well, it seems like we're talking politics right now. So, in 2017, we were on a yacht. We called it uh, Do You Know of a Project. Uh, we also identified some goals and targets. We also made a team. Uh, we also took some meat, some rum, and so then we just uh, used our finger to point out uh, to where we actually want to go. We uh, had some plans uh, for three years and uh, we expected that uh, it was going to be smooth without any storm, without any icebergs, but uh, you know that you know that uh, life uh, well, we had to, to adjust our plans a little bit. We had to, to create our project uh, against very harsh times. We had to, to overcome a lot of barriers, and uh, the project uh, turned into a short marathon. So some people got really tired. Uh, some people got a little bit disappointed. Some people, quite the opposite, uh, they're happy that uh, well, it uh, has actually took us a little bit more time than expected. But we keep on selling. Do you know what is happening right now on the market? Uh, uh, business um, in construction well if you know what is happening you know that uh, a lot of people failed uh, a lot of companies disappeared but we keep on moving as far as i know we are still one of the biggest crowd investing projects in the world Well, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but uh, when we actually were preparing for this event, we didn't find any data saying that uh, anybody could uh, actually repeat something of uh, our results. Uh, Dmitry Sanich, uh, for example, right now, I think uh, that uh, he's uh, one of uh, the most uh, famous engineers uh, from Russia in the world. Why? Because uh, at least uh, five. 100,000 people got registered and, uh, for the project and they're keeping a very close eye on the project. And uh, to me, in this uh, global storm, our project uh, is uh, associated uh, with something really nice, with kind of a safety island, something really constructive, some Thing that uh, makes us believe uh, in future in uh, tomorrow and webinars uh, I listen to it's like a fairy tale before you go to bed you listen to it and you understand uh, that uh, something is still happening in this world uh, something positive uh, constructive uh, globally well we have been talking a lot about uh, construction but uh, project itself it's not just about construction it's also the results uh, of the efforts of a big number of people today we're talking in general about uh, the uh, project uh, and about uh, how each of you actually is investing, how you work with investments, uh, how you actually worry about uh, construction process. Uh, we uh, haven't uh, turned into a development company. No, we are not doing that. Uh, we are still working with uh, a wider spectrum of things. Today, I really know this feeling when you come to a construction site and you know how it uh, actually uh, appeared. So this is an incredible feeling. I think that uh, you have uh, uh, shared pretty much the same feeling. So I would like to ask you during this conference uh, to enjoy the results of uh, our work uh, that lasted for five years. Uh, I hope that you will enjoy it. I really want you to get some energy. I want to treat uh, this uh, event uh, like a real uh, uh, holiday. Uh, well, let's give a round of applause uh, to uh, our forthcoming events and let's start. 
Сергей, thank you very much. Uh, uh, just uh, one organizational issue. If our foreign uh, guests have a problem with uh, translation device, please raise your hands and then you will give a different device. Please just raise your hands uh, and uh, Evgenia will come over to you and uh, give you a good uh, translation device if something is wrong. So if there is a problem uh, with the translation, please uh, don't be shy and ask for a different device. So, you see, friends, uh, we have grown a lot, uh, really, and uh, now it's not enough just uh, to use uh, the Russian language, and uh, we have uh, to uh, work with uh, interpreters, uh, we uh, have uh, to share a lot of information, but we also need to make sure that uh, everybody can understand uh, this. Uh, it points out to the fact that uh, the instruments uh, uh, we use, uh, uh, crowd investment, micro-investments, uh, uh, it's not just a financial instrument, but it's also a social instrument uh, which uh, unites uh, us uh, uh, together. Uh, well, uh, we have uh, the same ideas. Uh, seems like uh, these people, uh, these people, yes, uh, they would have never come here together. But uh, today they are here and uh, today they are united by some common ideas. That is really precious. And that is why crowd investing today uh, is really developing very rapidly in the world. So when we started the project in 2017, we had a very ambitious goal. We knew that uh, we were going to have a lot of participants uh, and uh, they uh, would be from uh, different uh, corners of uh, this world. And we were supposed uh, to create uh, an infrastructure where we could uh, work with money and uh, they could go from investors uh, up to the project. Uh, so this infrastructure was created. You are now using this infrastructure. It is being improved on a regular basis. I'm talking about uh, personal cabinets uh, and also some legal aspects uh, related uh, to every investor and to the project in general. In fact, uh, this uh, uh, project meant a lot of uh, other work uh, uh, as well. We spent approximately two years uh, in negotiations with Mr. Duinov and his team. We worked on different aspects. Uh, we tackled different issues and we try to understand what uh, project we were working with and uh, only after two years working with this, this project when we were just uh, thinking about uh, our destiny we finally uh, created uh, infrastructure and uh, we also chose uh, infrastructure we are now using and it has proven to be a success. A lot of uh, people provided their positive uh, feedback and this conference is another proof to that. We have uh, people from different uh, countries, uh, they are investing, they support uh, the project and uh, when people approach me, very rarely people start talking about money. They first talk about uh, project and about technologies. People are really interested in the project, uh, they are interested in something they actually invest in. Uh, it is uh, really important. Uh, this is a very good indicator uh, which points out to the fact uh, that the project and technology, they are really vivid. And thanks to this uh, support uh, that was uh, felt from the very beginning, we started uh, to work very actively, even though that uh, we received a lot of criticism. Some people said that uh, we would fail or what if something uh, goes wrong. That's but it never happened. Uh, the project developed uh, very rapidly at a very rapid uh, pace, uh, and we were very happy when uh, we got a uh, very modern laboratory. Uh, do you remember back then, in the well, during the, one of the stages, uh, we? Uh, had uh, some difficult uh, issues uh, and so we didn't know how to work with them but at the same time we uh, still uh, managed to do a lot uh, it's also very important to talk about competences uh, and they helped us uh, to move uh, forward so we created a laboratory and right now this is laboratory is one of the most modern laboratories in the world and it was uh, certified well actually you can see this uh, certificate or this uh, diploma and it points out to the fact that this laboratory 
and the results provided by the laboratory, they are absolutely legitimate all around the world. And we can officially show them to potential customers, uh, to uh, clients, uh, and uh, simply to people interested in our work. Here you can see actually quite an old picture of the laboratory, but uh, today we're going to discuss in detail what uh, this laboratory is all about, uh, what uh, it uh, gives to the project. But the, it was uh, the very first uh, step uh, taken by us. Our major task uh, was always uh, related uh, to the construction of innovative center Sobol Mash, and we were moving in this direction very actively starting from the very beginning. I remember how much we talked uh, about uh, this opportunity for us uh, to become residents. Do you remember that conference when Alexander Sudarev announced that we finally became uh, residents? Uh, please uh, raise your hands. Uh, well, actually, not so many people. I thought that uh, there were more people. Well, I know that there are a lot of familiar faces. Well, it's so nice to see you. So you remember that was a real victory. We were so happy. That was a very serious thing, because if uh, you want to become a resident of a special economic zone, and we are in this zone right now, uh, well, you have to work a lot. It's like Russian Silicon Valley, just for you to understand. Yes, see, real Silicon Valley, it's like a real brand. This is a brand. This is a brand. So this is our Silicon Valley, where we work with different technologies. And in order to become resident of this platform, you actually had uh, to be really selected. Uh, we were exposed to a real selection process, uh, and we uh, proven uh, that uh, we uh, deserve that. Uh, so what uh, we actually received? Well, first of all, we received a land plot uh, for our enterprise. By the way, uh, today you are going to see it with your own eyes. You are going to see what uh, has uh, been uh, uh, created and what has been built uh, using investments. By the way, by the way, if you look out of the window, you can see that building. This is uh, it is quite big. Uh, this is really great. So uh, we received a land plot from uh, the state. And by the way, upon completion of the construction process, we can uh, buy it uh, at just one percent of its cadastral value. So this is our assets. Further on is uh, tax incentives and so much uh, using this uh, tax incentives. By the way, have you heard that not long ago we received a special decision regarding uh, also I mean, they received back uh, VAT and it will also be uh, used uh, for uh, this uh, project. And, and for uh, we have very good infrastructure and we will be able to use it. Uh, you can see loans, uh, a very uh, good uh, area in general, uh, different uh, plants, etc. And we as residents, we can use it. We are now in a very nice uh, room here and we can also use it as residents. So, do we receive help from the state? Well, probably not uh, directly, but at the same time, still we can use uh, all those benefits and uh, things uh, that uh, can be uh, given by the state to the business, and uh, we are doing it successfully. So, we became residents, and after that, uh, we got another very important task. Yes, okay, we have a land plot, but we're supposed to launch the construction process. What about Russia? Well, I've heard, I don't know whether it's true or not, uh, but uh, I heard such a story that 70% of time uh, is needed uh, for receipt of uh, all the papers, uh, permissions, and only 30% of the time goes only for construction process itself. We have pretty much similar situation. So, how much time has already passed? Uh, one year, one year and a half before we actually became residents, and then we only proceeded uh, to construction when we received uh, that very permission allowing us uh, uh, to start uh, construction. We were exposed to a lot of uh, inspections, uh, and uh, they uh, said that uh, not just our project, but our building can be built and it can be used uh, for all those activities we actually scheduled. Uh, so Rospatrebnazor, different uh, organization, establishments, uh, state expertise, uh, we have been through it. Uh, and uh, after that, uh, we received uh, a permission. And if I'm not mistaken, in November 2020, we finally got it. Yes, so that was the official date when we received it. Uh, in parallel, while we receiving permission, we also, uh, also created uh, the so-called construction camp. Uh, 
uh, like uh, temporary approach roads, etc. It allowed us uh, to uh, launch a construction process uh, right after we received permission. So no waste of time. Here is the question. Uh, did we manage to do that? Uh, was the instrument really efficient? Uh, is our project viable? And here is uh, the answer. Well, I think that uh, you will actually well see it with your own eyes. We will be answer uh, to this uh, question uh, later on. Well, for sure, you will be able to do that. Uh, today, we will be talking uh, in uh, detail uh, about uh, construction. We will be talking about uh, construction stages we have already accomplished. We also will talk uh, a bit more about uh, company, uh, Sovol Mash. We are going to have special speakers uh, for that. Uh, but uh, right now, just like Sergei Simonov said, uh, it is used uh, all around the world. So, and now, when we start uh, talking about uh, the technical part, I would like to start with these uh, people. I would like to start with entrepreneurs, uh, people uh, who actually promote our uh, projects and our technologies all around the world. And they are already making money on it. And uh, the first such uh, uh, man, uh, engineer, entrepreneur is Andrei Lobov. And uh, you know this person. I would like to invite him uh, to the stage. Uh, Andrei, please. Welcome to the stage. What is this? How, how, what I should click? I don't understand. Oh, you just use this button to switch between the slides. Good afternoon, dear friends. My name is Andrei Lobov. And it's my pleasure to see such a big international team investing into do you know of a project uh, it's very important to, to me because when we started so there were just a few people yes a small number of uh, people but now i can see a big number of uh, different partners uh, representatives uh, from different countries uh, and it's really great and now i would like to say a few words about uh, our activities, what we actually do and why I'm here and why I am a part of this project. Uh, when uh, we started uh, the project and it was done by Sergei Semyonov uh, at uh, the Old Russian Exhibition in Moscow, probably you remember this uh, famous conference and everybody was uh, very, you know, uh, uh, intrigued uh, and back then uh, I was uh, overwhelmed with billing and I uh, remember that back then I also used uh, a motor wheel, do you know, for, and uh, I really wanted to, to use it. Uh, and uh, when I first, by the way, saw it, I really wanted from the very beginning. And when motors appeared, I started to, to use it, of course. And so we, together with our steam uh, company, we decided to, to use uh, this uh, uh, motor uh, in uh, all the possible types of uh, transport in order to understand uh, where we can actually have some kind of uh, commercialization, something that you can make money on, something that you can really uh, benefit from, and something that could also be given to our partners, not uh, just uh, on uh, just uh, investing money and uh, acquiring shares of our enterprise, but also on something uh, that goes beyond that. We will be manufacturing these motors and we will be using it. Uh, one of our most successful projects uh, is the so-called uh, Green Project uh, or Green Tuk Tuk. Uh, it was uh, developed uh, especially for our friends uh, from India and uh, we have uh, prepared uh, three kit uh, sets. We can hand them over to very safe hands uh, on uh, the different uh, conditions and the special conditions. Sorry. This is Tuk Tuk, Piaggio, Maxima. Here we have a three kilowatts uh, engine installed, and it was installed on box. Yes, so it was installed on box, and it was tested in uh, two different. Uh, agricultural companies or areas. Uh, you have just uh, seen one of them. This is an uh, agri-company dealing uh, with uh, producing and selling plants, trees, uh, flowers. People were really happy and satisfied. 
But what about uh, s this uh, tricycle? What is so special about that? For the first time ever, we installed uh, solar panels uh, on it, uh, two solar panels, uh, 330 watts. It allows this small motor drive and move at a speed of 20 kilometers per hour without uh, any battery at all. I keep talking about uh, this. You understand uh, that very soon people will understand that it is possible that you can uh, generate uh, electricity not from a socket, but in the morning you can just uh, get onto your wheel and uh, vehicle and uh, go to work or, or to go on some vacation. And you don't have to think about uh, petrol, diesel, fuel, etc. You just turn the key and then you can give it a ride. I have, uh, within during this last year, tested in different conditions. but. Everybody was surprised uh, when they saw these uh, magic uh, vehicles. Uh, it's it's not magic, in fact. Uh, the point is that uh, combined widen they uh, provide for such an energy saving that this uh, three kilowatt motor it allows uh, uh, to um, at a uh, 50 ampere uh, drive uh, uh, more than uh, 50 kilometers. Uh, but uh, solar panels also give another 25 kilometers. Uh, 55 kilometers on average per hour and uh, if we move at the speed of uh, 20 kilometers per hour we can use it uh, during the daytime so from 100 to 200 kilometers uh, per day yes uh, when i uh, receive uh, feedback like oh guys uh, what about electricity what about electric transport uh, this is nothing because you cannot uh, use it for long distances but i move uh, between obnitska belarus of uh, two towns and also uh, my house is located 25 kilometers away from here so i go back and forth during the daytime but at the same time half of the battery left uh, can you imagine uh, can you think about our future and what kind of perspective we have uh, uh, no diesel motors on magnets uh, can uh, be used uh, in the same manner i keep talking about this say hey, people can you just understand that is incredible well i know that i'm quite short of time that is why I will proceed to these beauty items. Uh, well, uh, here we have also a motor from our partner, from uh, Viktor Aristov, uh, SPP High Technologies. And uh, this uh, motor does uh, 5 kilowatts. For the first time ever, we used here a 5 kilowatt uh, motor, and then it was tested where it was uh, given to somewhere uh, in Sochi. Well, I think that you have already been in Sochi. Uh, do you know that it's really difficult uh, to make it uh, to Krasne Poliana uh, because there are a lot of mountains and roads, so they are really terrible. Some stretches are nice, but some of them are not. Uh, well, but at the same time, it uh, proved to be a great success. Uh, here we have uh, uh, two batteries. 50 amperes per hour. It allows to use it for 200 kilometers. Again, thanks to the fact that uh, well, it provides for really energy saving. Slavyanka is uh, really economical, so you cannot uh, charge it from solar panel. But there is no need uh, to actually do it. Uh, no need to have a solar panel here on top of that. Uh, Ivan, a uh, uh, person who actually tested it, uh, he used it uh, everywhere. Uh, what he actually does, he Okay, I will try to explain. He, how, how can I tell that? Uh, he's a sports instructor, and uh, he has to move from, from one location to another, and also uh, he deals uh, with uh, extreme sports, and he has been everywhere on this uh, motorbike. Uh, and during the winter time, and also in uh, spring later on, we made a video with him. You can see it right now on the screen. He was absolutely satisfied, uh, and I uh, think that, uh, well, there are a lot of perspectives, and also for our partners, not only in India, but all around the world. I should say that Bajash company uh, right now is a leader in the global market, so that is why I'm asking our partners uh, to really bear that in mind and uh, to pay attention to this uh, kit and start earning money in their countries. Now, guys, and this is my favorite one, this is karting. So, karting. As for karting, we started with a 3 kilowatt motor, DI90S, 
And we uh, used it uh, during the winter time in Sochi, Krasnaya Poliana, and I know that uh, here we have a person who also uh, was there, and he left uh, there not only just his heart, but uh, something uh, more than that. What uh, did people say? What kind of feedback we received? Uh, those who actually order it and those uh, dealing with uh, renting cartings. I don't mean to say uh, that uh, it cannot be used as a sports car. This is a special issue. We will tell you uh, about this a little bit later. But this uh, uh, frame, Rima Eva and the Rima Alpha, very powerful uh, frames. Uh, uh, well, we also have uh, those used for sports, but that was for renting cards. So, uh, uh, 90 SM can be used uh, for these uh, tracks, six uh, runs for 10 minutes, but uh, LTC can only make uh, three runs per 10 minutes, so you save up to two times more. Uh, those uh, dealing with renting, uh, this is a very good idea for business, a uh, very interesting one. You don't need any petrol, you don't need any fuel. So this cartodrome, you can see right now on the screen, uh, it is located uh, not far from Moscow. And there they use, uh, uh, they use uh, uh, petrol. Half a ton of uh, petrol uh, per week in order to charge uh, those carting. Can you imagine how much it costs, uh, plus a few, plus engines, uh, uh, well, they absorb a lot, uh, and by the way, they cannot be used for a long time, uh, but uh, our engines, uh, they are internal, uh, you just only need to change bearings, so that's it. Uh, so pilots using those uh, cards, they were absolutely happy, they really liked it. Uh, on the screen where they were interviewed, uh, they were a little bit shy in front of the camera, but uh, separately they were absolutely satisfied and happy. On the second card we have a new motor, and not long ago we received it from Victor Arist of uh, DA90S, uh, so four thousand five hundred turns. Just for you to compare, uh, the cartodrome uh, they hit uh, a real record. So this car that drove 20 years, one minute, uh, uh, four seconds. Uh, it's, uh, it was not just uh, when we used it, but it was like a year ago, maybe two years ago, I don't know. So uh, our result was one minute and uh, eight seconds. So can you imagine? One minute, uh, eight seconds, uh, uh, over one thousand uh, meters that is incredible i also gave it a try and that is really scary so we are done with carton let's move on okay so the so-called dog oh my god uh, back then uh, it was my favorite project and I remember how I used it uh, in winter, uh, yes, uh, this uh, dog, uh, so the speed is uh, 40 kilometers per hour, also it can travel uh, the distance uh, 40 uh, minutes, uh, so if here we have a BDLC motor, well, I'm just uh, tremble to think uh, what's going to happen, no more than 10 kilometers, uh, well, uh, no more than 10 kilometers, really, but, uh, well, look at this dog right now, how it is used. Uh, pretty much the same uh, docker with uh, DA90SM a kilowatt uh, was uh, done for commercialization. It was sent uh, to uh, a special area in Chelyabinsk where people use it in order uh, to uh, give a right to tourists, uh, to fishermen. There is a special zone where you are not allowed to use petrol. Uh, because uh, people responsible for all those safety issues, uh, they come over to you and say, okay, here is your penalty, uh, and you will have to pay uh, this uh, this sum of money because uh, you use uh, petrol. And no one could actually think that it could be electric. They were absolutely surprised. Uh, they couldn't believe that. Uh, and they say, oh my God, we are going to give you a special award. Uh, yes, use it. That is really interesting. Of course, they ask a lot of questions about the motor and... Um, you can go to Oleg, he's downstairs, and he will tell you a bit more about that. Here we have a 5 kilowatt motor. What I can say, that is like a really scary, but in the good sense of this word, uh, it was uh, uh, done based uh, uh, on an order from uh, Ministry for Emergency Situation. So here is the story. Last year, one of, uh, of uh, the uh, persons, uh, he was uh, I mean, just picking mushrooms in the forest, he had a heart attack, and uh, it took people 
of three hours uh, to find uh, him. And it was really difficult uh, to drag uh, this person out of the forest. And they approached uh, us and said, please do something. We really want uh, to have this kind of uh, machines in order to use uh, it in uh, such situation. So right now we are working on such a dog. Here is uh, the prototype. Uh, and also we need to have uh, something uh, to also drug a person, a special uh, uh, thing. Uh, this is my favorite project. Uh, the day before yesterday, uh, I used it uh, and also on the motor. Uh, I was talking about uh, right now on the screen uh, you can see uh, a boat uh, motor here we have a 5 kilowatt uh, DA 90s from our partner Viktor Aristov well I should say that uh, this is incredible that SPP gives us motor that we can uh, really taste so here is the, the deal uh, this motor has already been sold uh, and it's already been used uh, uh, for tourists in Chelyabinsk so they use it on the lake but uh, uh, what they can use it for. Yes, for example, for tourists, for fishermen. Yes, and, uh, well, do you know if motor uh, was of great help for them? Uh, we uh, gave uh, it to them. So we sold uh, this particular motor, and they uh, really liked it, uh, and they used it uh, during the summer summertime. Uh, very positive uh, feedback. Uh, we stay in touch, and I hope that very soon we will be able uh, to show you a video where uh, we... Uh, will uh, receive uh, just another piece of positive uh, feedback in terms of uh, round of applause and songs. I have never heard anything bad about uh, our motors and those haters trying to criticize our technologies. Well, I think that they just uh, invent different stupid things. I said no negative uh, feedback uh, and uh, I'm always uh, there. I can always show, always ready to show uh, the motors. Uh, this is technology of the future. Really, I assure you. So the motor, uh, which uh, you can find downstairs, uh, so uh, this is uh, 4,500 uh, uh, 4, turns. On this one, we have uh, 3,000 turns and so the day before yesterday we used it uh, on the river, on the lake uh, that was a very beautiful day and I would like to repeat once again back then, the day before yesterday I said, I want to have uh, this kind of motor 23-25 kilometers per hour, two of us and by the way, my computer broke, uh, but uh, at the same time, uh, it still worked very cool so, uh, am I running out of time? Okay, great. Oh, I forgot to say a few words about the so-called ant. This is how we call this machine. I don't know how to go back. Ah, oh, quadricycle. So one of our first projects, guys, uh, well, downstairs you can find uh, the owner of this ant, Matvey Plotnikov, a very famous blogger, you can find him on YouTube, uh, he can uh, give you a lot of uh, details about uh, this particular machine, and he came to us in Obninsk, and uh, he asked us not uh, just uh, to destroy this ant, but uh, to make some kind of hybrid, so we did it, uh, this is a real hybrid, a very good uh, uh, engine, but uh, there we also added it's our uh, 3 kilowatts uh, uh, motor DA90S, uh, which allows it to move up to 90 kilometers from per hour. But uh, of course, uh, that is a little bit modest uh, because uh, there is only one modest, but it can be used for uh, quite a long time. Uh, this battery is really great. So this is one of the first uh, batteries we ever manufactured. Uh, well, it's not very nice, but it allows uh, to move up to 70 kilometers per hour. But uh, Matvey can give you even more information about that. I think that uh, it used to, uh, to be a, a very uh, popular thing uh, uh, some time ago uh, in the Soviet times, yes. Uh, so it was manufactured in Tula and people, they uh, really wanted uh, to have it. Uh, they were ready to stay in line for a very long time just uh, to get it. Uh, uh, but uh, right now uh, it has uh, really been improved. Uh, right now uh, people install um, uh, Elefant uh, engine 
uh, on it, uh, but we decided to offer them a different kit, uh, D90S. Of course, uh, we could uh, give them even more, but that is enough for now. So people who actually use this ad, uh, they said, well, that is really cool, that is fantastic, uh, really saves a lot of energy and uh, nerves. That is great. Uh, it is much lighter than Bajaj Maximum. That is why it can uh, uh, travel uh, even a longer distance. I think that it can be used for, uh, well, for the normal uh, battery up to 100 kilometers. Uh, please uh, address all your issues. Tom Matvey, he will tell you a bit more about this. This is uh, our first, our first grasshopper, as we call it. So this is a quadricycle. So uh, right now here we have an ideal kit. Uh, we have a battery. Uh, we have also charging unit. Uh, there we also have uh, gearbox uh, and also DA90S and those who are interested, uh, well, I think that you should uh, consider um, acquiring such a kit uh, and uh, also this quadricycle will go as uh, a present and also here you have a fork op you uh, can use uh, also um, uh, a trailer, so it's like a small uh, uh, tractor. You can use it uh, for, I don't know, gardening and uh, for sowing plants, etc. So uh, Vitaly, our constructor, I have just talked to him and he said that uh, uh, he used uh, it with uh, his son, that they uh, drive uh, by uh, ducks and they were sleeping and they did not uh, even uh, wake up. So they didn't hear because it produces no noise. Why are we doing all that? Why we um, decided to, to use uh, this uh, motor in uh, this uh, uh, machinery, in these uh, units? Because, of course, we wanted to make money. We are not altruists uh, in the big sense of this award. At the end of the day, all uh, uh, people and everybody uh, talking to me uh, and uh, all our partners and people, they can see a uh, big future in uh, these uh, motors uh, and uh, they understand that these motors can substitute uh, uh, petrol uh, motors. Uh, this is a very perspective uh, direction. Uh, we are uh, receiving requests uh, on a regular basis uh, and today uh, we have uh, people from Italy and from Dominicana uh, to negotiate different issues. Uh, uh, just to do, They want to make business uh, in uh, their countries uh, using this technology. Uh, also Vanya from Germany, he's interested in that. We also have a special uh, kit set uh, for Europe, uh, for Piaggio. This is one of the most popular models in Europe, uh, a super model. Uh, a very interesting story started uh, with uh, uh, this uh, Piaggio. You know, it uh, was used for delivering flowers uh, and uh, uh, food uh, in a teeny tiny small street. And uh, this uh, uh, one can also be used uh, for uh, the same matter and for the same purpose. And uh, that is why we created a special kit for Europe. Future belongs to it. This is business. I'm asking uh, for your attention, uh, dear partners please try to use it in your business. We have l worked a long distance uh, in our uh, life, uh, in our work, uh, so let's move on. Thank you very much for your attention. Andrei, thank you very much. Andrei, uh, it's very interesting to listen to you because uh, he is a special person. He does not just uh, use uh, Slavyanko technology in practice, but uh, he also makes money uh, using uh, Slavyanko. So if you want to cooperate with him, please uh, talk to this uh, man uh, if you really want uh, to make money using Slavyanka. So I think that right now it's time to go back to Sobol Mash company. You remember what I mentioned at the very beginning. I said that we have already achieved the great results and traveled a long distance, figuratively speaking. And then I also said that we launched construction process. Uh, we started uh, to uh, build uh, our innovative uh, center and we're going to see it uh, today with our own eyes. Uh, uh, and as for this particular part, uh, as for construction works uh, and everything related to this project, well, I think this is something that should be covered uh, by Alexander Sudarev. Alexander, please, welcome to the stage. We are waiting for recent information from you. Thank you very much, Pasha. 
Good afternoon, dear friends. I know that you came here from different uh, parts of our world, and it's really great. Why? Because uh, apparently we can see that the project unites people all around the world, and it's really important. And now, first, uh, let's ask Pavel where Clicker is. <laughs> yes, I need Clicker. Andre is going to hand it over to us. Thank you very much. And now just uh, let's think about uh, how we started uh, uh, to uh, build uh, this uh, bureau or this building from the very beginning. On this slide right now you can see something that uh, is there in practice as of today. Uh, it was uh, modified even further, uh, but you will see it with your own eyes uh, later on when we will walk there. Uh, you are going to see a video, uh, and there we will talk a little bit about uh, all the construction stages. So initially we were supposed uh, to choose uh, a site, uh, get all the permission, but let's omit all these details uh, and uh, get down to the business. And let's talk about uh, uh, construction works. Uh, so we here had a pit. Uh, three meters deep, and after that, the construction team uh, started uh, to uh, prepare this site for concrete works. There were a lot of works uh, we had to uh, level up, I mean, the uh, surface of the pit. It was done. Then they started uh, to pour uh, concrete uh, foundations. They are quite uh, complicated, uh, so uh, actually it covered quite a big number of stages, actually three stages. Uh, uh, then uh, backfilling was performed. And it's worth mentioning that backfilling was uh, done uh, every 30 centimeters of the ground. Uh, we uh, used a special vibrator for compaction. Very uh, difficult uh, piece of work, but uh, there is a certain meaning behind that. It was really important to do that. Uh, uh, here you can see how they uh, installed metal structures. Actually, this is uh, the uh, backbone or the structure of uh, the uh, building. Um, it was produced uh, by a strong company. It is located uh, like three or four kilometers away from here. This uh, process was really interesting and we uh, had been waiting for it for a very long time. We received a lot of uh, comments when this process finally started because people who had been with us for a long time, they uh, understood how difficult it was, uh, how difficult it was to get all the permissions and finally uh, we made it uh, to this uh, uh, point. Uh, here you can see roofing, form work, uh, and also transition slabs uh, and other pieces of uh, buildings uh, on all the elements. Uh, uh, these are special solutions and everything is uh, done in line with the design documentation. It was uh, developed uh, in order to fully meet all the possible requirements uh, for the building and there were a lot of uh, requirements. Now if you look at um, the, for example, third floor, then you will see we have uh, rebars, we have screed, we also see uh, quite a thick layer of concrete uh, and also here we have layer by layer uh, ground uh, compaction. Uh, it was uh, very important to do that in order to have a very high resistance uh, to vibration, something that uh, could allow us to use uh, high precision equipment as well as uh, also different uh, um, also um, a machine units or processing units or something that is used for uh, metal treatments uh, and also automated uh, line for engine uh, manufacturing and it also allow us uh, to uh, work with electronics and electronic devices and now on this slide on this uh, video you can see that the winter is almost over then uh, it uh, gets warmer uh, we uh, have some facing works uh, uh, performed uh, right uh, in front of you. And now we can apparently say that uh, uh, 
right now uh, we work uh, uh, with uh, um, uh, different uh, partition walls uh, and many other things. So actually, this is more about the internal part, something that you will see inside the building. And uh, uh, these uh, solutions fully uh, meet uh, all the possible requirements. Uh, uh, it can be used uh, uh, for various purposes. Uh, no problems with heating, no problems with electricity. Uh, quite uh, a big number of different uh, heating units uh, will also be installed that. And uh, together with the uh, high resistance uh, to vibration here you can create the so-called clean rooms it means uh, that uh, yes it, it is possible to work with um, electronics high precision equipment like I previously said and this is a module product it means that it can be multiplied you can make it bigger or narrow wider you can also add uh, different uh, uh, adjacent buildings um, and use them for various purposes and it can be used uh, uh, for uh, manufacturing agents and not only what else can i say so i think that on the video you have seen uh, uh, the so-called ears you know uh, one floor uh, buildings also uh, linked uh, to this building what are they needed for let me explain the point is that in these ears you are gonna uh, have uh, uh, different types uh, of uh, uh, systems, uh, for example, it can be used uh, for uh, supplying electricity for uh, low current systems. And since we're going to use here with innovative technologies, you also need uh, to ensure quite a high level of uh, security. Why? In order uh, to uh, work properly with intellectual property and also shouldn't forget about uh, commercial secrets, uh, so to speak. And there is no need uh, to admit uh, all the possible workers here uh, to uh, special areas so to speak, if you know what I mean. But only those people who have special permission will be admitted to this area. So if it is multiplied, all these uh, uh, items, all these uh, the small buildings, uh, they can uh, be modified. Uh, you can have a different number of them, depending on your needs. So the heat counter is almost closed. Uh, we have uh, fire stairs. Uh, we also uh, see that uh, well, also uh, partition walls uh, being delivered there. Uh, windows are there, uh, ventilation grids, uh, uh, construction team is working on the uh, interiors of the buildings, uh, workshops uh, uh, being uh, prepared. Uh, this is a particular stage when we see that uh, heat uh, contour is almost uh, uh, ready. Uh, as of today, we also need uh, to install doors, uh, gates, uh, also hydro isolation of the first floor also needs to be performed. You know that all the concrete works have been accomplished. After that, uh, uh, you will also uh, see a screen. Uh, yes, uh, don't forget about uh, rebars. And after that, we will be able to install uh, a technical and and uh, heating equipment as soon as uh, uh, it is done. And then we can say that uh, uh, we can be linked uh, and uh, we can have uh, this connection with the utilities uh, and um, uh, engineering networks. I think that uh, we can move to the next slide. So, uh, yes, people are there. They are working on it, uh, on this building. I should say that, yes, construction is in progress. And believe me, it is really interesting to be there and uh, sometimes uh, you uh, also learn uh, some new words and <laughs> different uh, phrases and so they are really active uh, they uh, uh, negotiate uh, they talk about solutions and they are there they are in the zone they are really working hard on that so what about uh, premises there uh, why do we also need uh, to rent uh, some areas uh, in this building and uh, to answer this question we should say that uh, this uh, building, first of all, it will specialize uh, on uh, the asynchronous uh, engines and also on uh, manufacturing them. And apart from engine, an electromagnetic system, uh, also a uh, rotor starter, uh, we also need to create uh, and to develop uh, design documentation, get all the possible certificates. Uh, also, uh, we need uh, to uh, create uh, the so-called prototype and uh, to really have this engine made, uh, um, I mean, uh, physically, really. And uh, after uh, we uh, do that, uh, we also need to uh, manufacture technological equipment uh, used uh, for uh, 
making all those engines. It's a very important task for Solar Marsh. As of uh, today, we have quite a serious problem with uh, the so-called uh, standard or conventional equipment used for us manufacturing asynchronous agents. I wouldn't say that uh, this is quite an old uh, equipment that can no longer be used, but uh, we are now living in a new era. We need uh, more high precision, more innovative equipment, uh, and uh, this uh, uh, something that Solar Marsh is working on, this um, uh, equipment is already being designed. Uh, what about this slide? Here you can see agents. They have already been um, uh, created by Solar Marsh Company, if we talk about our work with uh, potential customers, then probably our policy could be as follows. So, for example, a person uh, asks for a certain order for a certain unit, uh, we form all the requirements, and then we proceed to the work. But in reality, in the business, uh, usually client wants to touch something, uh, just uh, to feel and to see something uh, really physically. And here you can see industrial engines, uh, they have already been tested, so they have already been manufactured, uh, and they can uh, be used already. And also, I should say that right now, in parallel, we have approximately 56 uh, uh, different construction uh, uh, works they are in progress and it also improves in built uh, engine for electric instruments uh, for uh, like uh, items like that i think that you have already seen it uh, in uh, this uh, room uh, and uh, as for this particular picture right now, you can see so the starter, the starter of uh, this engine. It is attached uh, to also a synchronous uh, engine conventional one and just uh, look at the uh, size you can see s the one with Slavyanka is much smaller but uh, this is a devout saw just for you to understand it's a really high quality instrument so basically we can say that the size is really good what else should i say apart from the agents for this uh, uh, hand uh, instruments uh, also we have a special drive here and uh, this drive is based on solar mash technology and uh, uh, it is used uh, in controller and uh, in engine itself controller has its own architecture fully created by solar mash and based on a certain mathematical model also developed by solar mash and very techni important technical uh, item or uh, detail, so it uh, can be used at a frequency of up to 600 uh, hertz. Here we used uh, special steel as uh, for, for example, winding uh, star and triangle, this classic winding, you cannot uh, just uh, uh, get uh, this kind of results. Um, on this uh, slide uh, you can see uh, quite uh, um, the relevance, so to speak, uh, units. Uh, it is now being uh, designed and will be represented at the exhibition, organized uh, a little bit uh, later. This is uh, uh, an elevator winch that has no uh, gearbox, uh, no gear. You know that uh, in the um, current situation, a lot of companies, they left the Russian Federation, and we have uh, some uh, problems uh, with the uh, supplies, including elevator winches. Uh, it means that there is a certain niche that uh, was uh, liberated, and we can fill in uh, this uh, niche and probably even talk about uh, uh, leading position in uh, this area. So this winch can be used uh, in cargo elevators, uh, passenger elevators, uh, well, and not only, of course, uh, we are going to have different uh, variants, uh, different options, uh, different capacity, and so on and so forth. But something that you can see right now, um, well, this is something uh, where actually Solar Marsh started with uh, using Duino technology. So actually, this is a motor wheel that was a part of the wheel. You can also see it in that room. You can use it, see how it is presented on the stands. But now we are in a situation uh, uh, of what uh, actually Alexander Ivanovich described in the following manner. So something uh, which can be produced uh, uh, in uh, such a quantity, it is something that can allow to use motor wheel uh, as well. It's also 
also worth mentioning that development of the technology, uh, the solar mesh capacity, something that we have allowed us to create a number of technological processes. And uh, now it allows us uh, to uh, use a special uh, rotors uh, based on aluminum, both for uh, hand uh, used uh, instrument, but also for motor wheels. It means that we say no to copper. We only work with aluminum. Uh, technology allows us to do it very fast without any oxides and things like that. And it allows us to have uh, quite very very good characteristics of uh, these uh, items. It's very important. Why? Because when I uh, come up to the stage, I say that it's really great that uh, we met here and uh, we are representatives of different countries. But uh, they, all this, it can really unite us because in every country in the world, it's, uh, well, how can I say? Well, of course, we use different techniques, machines, uh, elevators, instruments. Everybody uses it and everybody wants to open a tap and to get the water uh, there. Uh, for example, stand on the escalator with the metro, well, whatever, so many things. As of today, we can see that 60% of all the electricity uh, generated by uh, humankind uh, goes uh, for these motors. And if we exclude uh, synchronous uh, engines uh, from our life in a couple of months, we will make it back to the Stone Age. Why? Because this is uh, something that makes our life really comfortable. So on this slide, uh, you can see traction engines, or I would say one traction engines. Uh, also, we have just uh, general industrial engines. Well, it's not about that. So the point is that traction engines, uh, they also are uh, designed by Solar Marsh. Andrea Lobov, uh, he has just taken the floor and he said that, yes, they do really work uh, and uh, he can demonstrate it and he suggests that you should acquire it, uh, buy it. And uh, Victor Aristov also working on that. In the next room, uh, you can also see 100 uh, detail 6. Uh, it was one of the things uh, manufactured by Solar Marsh uh, in the real format uh, called engine. And it's worth mentioning that first engine was also, uh, by the way, sent by Mr. Lobov, and he started uh, to use it in his projects. And now on your screen, you can see one of the controllers also uh, designed by Solar Marsh. This controller is needed for a motor uh, wheel, a wheel motor. 318 size and it became a real virus in the internet and of course technological equipment something that we have already discussed today so this equipment uh, will allow us uh, to make it a new level and uh, to create uh, some kind of a new technological environment and say no to uh, this uh, very heavy uh, machine units uh, occupying a lot of spice we can really have a higher level of uh, robotization we can multiply projects and different uh, tasks and uh, simply speaking we can also uh, switch between different sizes uh, without any problem using these controllers, without any additional fittings, and you don't have uh, to change the production line completely. Uh, of course, uh, well, within uh, some admissible uh, range, uh, but well, you still have to bear this fact in mind. On the screen, you can see uh, like a so-called uh, an example of uh, such uh, uh, unit. This is used uh, for incremental encoders, actually the main part of it. Uh, here we uh, magnet uh, uh, and perform the section. And then this rings uh, as part of bearing, so they installed on the driving shafts and things uh, to uh, these also sensors. Uh, we can actually control the engine. We can open, I guess, or close it and cut it off, uh, depending on what we need. Uh, it's also the uh, case uh, for hand instruments. So these uh, um, similar things, uh, they also uh, manufacture it uh, uh, in the China, but also team coders, uh, they still installed uh, on external parts and it has a very bad impact uh, on the quality of the product and also negative impact on uh, the viability of the product and uh, also on the different uh, properties, for example, humidity or resistance uh, to uh, different, uh, uh, different uh, factors. Uh, 
here it is done a little bit differently. At the same time, you have to understand that you don't have uh, to ask China to supply this kind of items, uh, and so you are no longer dependent on other countries. You can just use these products. I would like to say the following thing. Uh, we are discussing various things, and so all those things, uh, they became feasible thanks uh, to one very important thing. So, uh, solar mash, laboratory, what do we need it for? Uh, do we really need it? Well, in general, I would say yes. Everything that was created, it was tested in the laboratory. And based on that, further solutions were, um, and decisions were made. And now I would like to invite uh, to uh, the stage Alexander Semyonov. He is head uh, of uh, the solar mash laboratory, and he will tell us more about the uh, laboratory, how it works, uh, uh, and uh, he will tell us what uh, uh, we actually need it for. Alexander, please, over to you. Good afternoon. I'm glad to see each of you. So, if you just uh, lay aside just our laboratory, when you hear the word laboratory, what do you actually imagine? Well, I think uh, ladies in uh, snow white uh, overalls or coats, uh, carrying different this medical stuff, uh, wearing glasses. Uh, well, in our case, it's a little bit different uh, because we might have, for example, uh, have a load meter, high precision load meter. Uh, have, we have, have it on the table at the same time to have like kind of a hammer or for example a crowbar and face fighter by its side uh, you know why is it so because in our laboratory we test the engines uh, uh, electric rotating engines uh, well in this particular case uh, we have this type of equipment. So, for example, here we have uh, alloy, electricity, we measure different electric parameters, and we need a really high precision here because it's all about metrology. But at the same time, we should think about mechanics. Uh, all the engines, so they should be connected, like uh, clutches, uh, they should be all connected uh, to the stands. Uh, we should also think about the right installation and their position. Our laboratories, they are different. It's different, sorry. Right now, on this picture, you can see a room where we have uh, stand equipment. This equipment consists of uh, three loading machines and uh, also uh, depending on uh, the object of control, uh, I mean, a uh, torque, uh, um, then um, voltage, etc. Uh, we install it uh, in this particular manner and so then conduct uh, our tests. Um, thus, for example, you can see one of our recent uh, uh, engines we are getting ready for Army 2022 and this one is uh, made uh, for armored uh, personal carrier, just uh, one of them. And uh, not long ago we tested it. Uh, yes, just uh, uh, one remark, I would like to jump in for a second. This engine will be installed uh, on a demilitarized uh, armored uh, personal carrier and we will be using it uh, as uh, an electric tug, uh, well, actually hybrid uh, unit. Uh, and we will be testing their Slavyanka uh, as uh, like a driver for a heavy machine that can be used in adverse or harsh conditions. It will also be floating or waterfowl. It will be in greater demand in Russia uh, amongst uh, such uh, organizations uh, as uh, um, emergent, uh, Ministry for Emergency Situation and Rescue Organizations. Thank you very much for your remark. So here is the question for you. Well, very often uh, people ask us, uh, right now, this testing laboratory, has it already been uh, created? Uh, well, it is located uh, in a special room. It's not uh, that big, uh, but here, uh, within uh, uh, this area, uh, this, uh, this building, you can have this uh, adjacent building and it will be given to you for your laboratory. What do you need such a big laboratory for? Because I really like it when I have uh, a lot of space, enough space. Okay, I will try to answer this question 
Well, why do we need a laboratory? When I was getting for um, such a question, well, first of all, we need to speed up uh, development works and our research works. And with the help of uh, uh, this uh, laboratory, we can uh, manifest and we can show uh, the advantages of our combined winding. But at the same time, I thought if we didn't have a laboratory, it wouldn't be possible for us uh, to work in this area. Why? Because uh, what does it mean when we talk about uh, engines? So, for example, a customer comes over and says, for example, I need this kind of engine. Uh, the customer has technical uh, brief and technical parameters. What do we usually do? We need to, to make certain calculations uh, of, uh, regarding uh, the uh, windings. Uh, we have uh, 3D modelings. We have specialist for that. Uh, then we prepare a special sample uh, or a unit. Uh, we have a certain capacity for doing that. So what else? Then we give it to the customer and say, here it is, just take it. Uh, but uh, then the customer might ask, how can I verify what uh, this is actually what I want to have without experimental proof of the parameters, reflected technical brief. It is uh, just not possible to make a customer get interested in that. Uh, so, okay, uh, we can just give it a try, we can uh, start it, and uh, of course it will start to rotate. But uh, all the edges, they can actually rotate, but at the same time we can... Uh, we uh, should be able to uh, show uh, the advantages of uh, our engine. Okay, so the data that uh, we received, uh, uh, can they uh, somehow be uh, proven uh, in form of uh, documents? Uh, uh, well, I should say yes, because uh, when uh, we uh, work with every single test, uh, then it is followed uh, by a protocol. Uh, and so we reflect uh, all the information in uh, the protocol, all the details uh, and also apart from the tests uh, we also need to, to develop a certain methodology or method uh, we need to understand what kind of parameters uh, should be tested um, well uh, i should say that uh, tests they are absolutely different uh, we have comparative uh, research uh, uh, tests uh, a lot of them there are different types of uh, such tests and at the very beginning you should understand uh, what customer actually expects from you and so after that uh, we agree upon a certain program or um, testing methods uh, or probably sometimes the customer might also look at uh, our nomenclature we have already developed uh, a lot of documents. So we agree on the whole procedure, upon the whole procedure from the very beginning, and based on the results of the tests and so the program that we have, then we proceed to work. And by the way, representative of the customer might also be present uh, during the test. Well, what about uh, laboratory? Uh, I mean, is it really well known in business circles? I should say that uh, uh, recently uh, it uh, has become really, I would say, famous, not, I mean, people, uh, I, I would say, no, not famous, uh, well known, uh, thanks uh, to our channels and the channels used about uh, Sovomash, and also apart from that, uh, uh, recently, uh, we uh, also developed uh, certain competences, very good uh, competences, uh, we have gained a certain experience, we have high precision equipment, uh, we have uh, specialists, uh, uh, and they know how to use all those methods and equipment, we have a program, we have methods, we have all it takes, and of course, all together, it uh, uh, brings us uh, to a brand new level, and of course, customers prefer to approach us from uh, different uh, cities, from different locations. We are a well-known technology uh, company. So here is the question. Um, well, the question is about industries, right? What, where are you particularly well known? What do you exactly mean? I don't understand your question. Do I understand it correctly? You want to find out more about our customers or what? Uh, well, uh, there are different customers, uh, I just, uh, well, sometimes uh, uh, also customers approach us and they want uh, just uh, to have their engine tests uh, tested, uh, but anyway, uh, we also um, 
always uh, ready to communicate with our customers. Uh, we can provide information. Apart from that, so we also have a lot of uh, internal work. So we prepare different uh, uh, sample units. Okay, so I will uh, put it this way. No, no, no. Sorry. Uh, let's not uh, force uh, uh, Alexander to tell something that is strictly confidential. So here is the point. Uh, asynchronous engines are used in absolutely different spheres of our life and so whether it is uh, I don't know uh, wood processing uh, industry transport uh, or whatever there is uh, of course a great interest uh, in uh, these uh, engines but apart from that uh, certain establishments also approach us in order for example to settle disputes uh, uh, in certain cases uh, yes uh, there are a lot of different cases uh, and uh, customers approach us uh, um, different uh, conditions. Uh, sometimes, uh, for example, uh, customers might have a certain object of control and they say, for example, we have this kind of engine. Could you please test it? Uh, we say, yes, of course, but I do not always ask whether they actually use it. But I would like to say once again that uh, it's uh, based on our technology. This is one of the most important things. Uh, something else? Yes, I would like to add something. Recently, we actually uh, decreased uh, the amount uh, of external works uh, we are working right now to our full capacity we also are working internally as for the customers uh, well first uh, this is uh, all about uh, I mean our methods and our technologies like I said but sometimes of course if we have uh, some spare capacity we might also take on board some other customers as well so we are working to our full capacity so I would like to continue I would like to say a few words about uh, future well okay then I will leave you all alone on the stage okay sure right now we have uh, certain limitations uh, regarding uh, the space right now our laboratory is just a small room and there we have uh, stands and also we have one more room where we have uh, uh, measurements uh, uh, units uh, and very often we don't have enough space uh, yes we sometimes have an object of control but uh, we physically do not have enough space apart from that uh, for this uh, laboratory uh, we are uh, also uh, got uh, a separate uh, cable or we have additional airflow so actually that would not be reasonable even to move someone else we would like uh, uh, the construction process to be over and then probably we move somewhere else uh, but close by uh, we think that uh, uh, this space uh, allocated for laboratory will be five or six times bigger and thanks to that we will be able to conduct experiments uh, we have uh, three loading machines like I said right now but uh, at the same time we can use uh, only one at a time and uh, in another space uh, when we uh, move uh, to a different location uh, we will be able to use uh, three of them and of course we will be able to hire some additional experts uh, we have quite a shortage of them right now apart from that we also can increase the number of orders and so we will be able acquiring some additional equipment uh, that will actually expand uh, our capacity and uh, our potential in general. Just an example, several weeks ago uh, we were approached by somebody and they say, can you actually uh, design such an engine? Uh, no, I cannot. Well, we said no, we cannot test it because uh, we do not have enough capacity for that right now with the laboratory. So as soon as we move to a different uh, uh, room or a different uh, building, then we'll be able to do that. That's for sure. Oh, well, inside, uh, well, it's quite difficult to do it inside. I will explain it this way. Right now, I have two parts. The first part is, I mean, this block where I know where uh, the equipment, where I know how to install equipment. And the second part is the so-called uh, free space and depending on uh, the uh, order and uh, depending on our financial capacity, uh, I mean, just to buy the equipment, then the equipment will be bought uh, based on these factors. What else do you want to, what uh, uh, can we say also? Here we're going to have uh, some uh, additional uh, power supply and so the quality Oh, are you talking about electricity? Yes, I am talking about electricity, of course. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, no, uh, not food, of course. 
Right now, the only thing we can do is just to control what is just within the norm, but we cannot anyhow influence that. Uh, for example, if uh, someone, uh, oh, I mean neighbors, uh, they turn on their uh, equipment, uh, we will have to conduct experience, uh, if our experiments and our tests one more time because there might uh, have some problems. But this is for now, but it's not going to be the case here in this very building. We're not going to have uh, any problems. Oh, anyway, I can stay uh, here uh, during the break. I will can stay here for another 15 or 20 minutes, uh, but then I will have to take off uh, for work. So, dear colleagues, uh, we will have uh, some more time to ask your questions and we will be able to communicate a little bit. But now, let's uh, move uh, forward uh, and so let's uh, proceed to the next uh, presentation. So, please give me the microphone. Uh, and I would like uh, to invite uh, Yana Olegovna, please. And we would like to talk about, please, next slide. We would like to talk about a uh, leading uh, specialist, and uh, Yana will be talking about patents. So thank you very much, Alexander. I would like to welcome guests here. And I think that uh, we know each other very well. It's not about me, not about me as a leading specialist, uh, but I will be talking about uh, patents. Uh, I'm also a representative of a laboratory, but also work with information and technical information. Uh, power. I, uh, I am really responsible for that. And also, I work with patents. As for patents, uh, I receive a lot of questions. Uh, but let's uh, just uh, uh, go through the main points. Why do we need patents? Uh, those uh, who uh, listen uh, to Mitri Alexandrovich and our programs, uh, he says that patents uh, defend you not against the coping, but against the patent trolling. Uh, well, because uh, some bad people, so to speak, might earn money uh, on you, I mean, for, and uh, just uh, to your damage. What about patent uh, trolling? And why patent actually protects you? This is a protective document. Uh, in Russia, it's very important to, to uh, actually uh, identify ownership and also uh, uh, Right, uh, we can find information uh, about uh, such a patents uh, in uh, legislation. Uh, we um, know that it covers uh, uh, industrial samples, uh, intellectual property, uh, well, uh, and uh, inventions. What about patent trolling? And what about protection? For example, you have a certain technical solution, and uh, you would like uh, to turn it into a product you want based on this technical solution, uh, sell something, but you have not protected. Uh, but at the same time it can be patented uh, and you sell it and some organization or physical entity uh, register or buy some uh, non-used uh, uh, patent uh, for example yes and uh, actually uh, it protects uh, this uh, technical solution and it means that uh, this person this entity becomes the owner of this patent uh, and it means so that you actually use uh, 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 this uh, someone else's uh, uh, product or solution and then so actually they might uh, file a suit against you and you cannot prove anything because actually you cannot do anything with the owner of the painted. Uh, uh, we need to understand that uh, here we first and foremost uh, talk about, uh, I mean, technical solution and if it is patented, then, uh, well, well, actually, this is blackmailing, you know, and this is patent trolling, but it falls within the legal framework, and you cannot do anything about that. Uh, well, you might uh, really have a lot of disputes, uh, the court, etc. Well, uh, the worst scenario is that you might go uh, bankrupt. Uh, this is the main function of uh, the patent. So, if you develop something, if you create something, it's not just enough to verify something, uh, just uh, to put it in the market. It should be patented, uh, if it, it can actually be patented. That is the point. Uh, point number Number two, so you understand, it's also about commercialization and non-material uh, assets. Uh, so object uh, as a patent, so this is an asset uh, uh, and it uh, actually boosts capitalization, uh, the uh, cost, and it allows to get a certain uh, profit uh, according to the license and patent uh, company gets a certain right uh, to use the product and you can actually uh, produce it with the help of other companies. An example, like for example, Victor uh, Aristov company, VSP uh, Weihai, uh, it actually worked uh, also with uh, uh, one of uh, the companies, also with Sobelmash. So you get a profit thanks to this intellectual property. That's, for example, patents uh, for the uh, certain products uh, uh, last uh, 20 years and for useful model at least 
10 years and you get a certain profit and if someone uses your technical solution without a license without this uh, patent without making reference to it and without uh, giving you a certain uh, uh, commission or certain funds so then you have the right to also open uh, a, a patent uh, dispute uh, to file a suit and get a certain compensation and uh, third point uh, number three which is important for participating in such a project special zone is all about competence of the companies so it's actually a proof of uh, its uh, professional uh, professionalism it's um, also actually brand awareness etc and in order to become a resident of a special economic zone apart from all the other facts also in the application we will have to s specify all the objects and object of intellectual property everything you have in this domain so you need to, to confirm your competence because uh, they are verified and uh, if you work with R&Ds, then of course uh, it is uh, equal to publication. You need uh, uh, it, uh, to uh, protect it against uh, patent trolling, then you also want uh, to get uh, probably profit, uh, uh, it's commercialization. So from those who give a license, and of course it's also about reputation and uh, proof of your competence. So how many objects of intellectual pro property we right now have? As for Solomash, they have uh, seven patents for their inventions, uh, and uh, they were filed uh, in the framework of their activities. They also have a registered a trademark, and also they have six patents. And so they've been handed over from ISPP, um, one of the founders of Solomash. Thank you very much. Yes, we will try to speak a little bit uh, s more slowly. So we have uh, four objects of uh, intellectual property, something that belongs uh, to Sobomash, and also 12 in uh, this domain. Uh, this is something that belongs to SPP, so uh, the founder. Uh, apart from that, SPP also have patents in other areas, for example, plasma technologies, uh, you know, Garinich, uh, well, I think that those know this company. They also have some patents for lighting and so on and so forth. But of course, first and foremost, we are interested in electric drive uh, and agents. Uh, what is actually patented? Uh, I will say a few words about that. Uh, uh, people know what it's all about. Uh, it uh, goes uh, for inventions, some technical solutions, uh, uh, like the methods uh, or product itself. I mean, methods uh, starting from production up to measurements, uh, management, etc. Either a useful model, also a technical solution, something that has to do with the product, uh, or an industrial sample. As for patents, uh, we decided to, to choose uh, uh, the inventions, um, this is something that uh, falls uh, within the scope of so invention should uh, meet uh, three criteria. Number one, it should be, be something new. Number two, a uh, certain uh, level of invention. So as for a specialist, uh, it uh, should not be uh, only based uh, to some technical uh, essence and also uh, industrial application. And uh, if it uh, meets uh, all the three criteria, then it can be patented. Uh, a useful model meets only two criteria, so it is new and also it can be used uh, in the uh, industrial uh, level. Uh, what about the patent and how it actually organized uh, the whole procedure? First, you uh, set a certain goal. Goal is related uh, to uh, this uh, R&D works and uh, development engineers. Uh, something that we create. It starts with a patent uh, uh, research. Uh, uh, special patent uh, search is organized. You can uh, uh, use uh, open patent base or you can use uh, technical uh, and uh, scientific literature, uh, information from mass media, a specialist uh, uh, study the trends, uh, the markets, if it is possible, in order just uh, to see uh, what uh, has already been uh, manufactured and uh, why your solution is uh, really new. A patent is supposed uh, to contain a description of uh, certain features and also reveal the essence of the product. Uh, we will be talking about invention. So when uh, the research and uh, uh, also uh, other stages are completed, then you uh, proceed uh, to application as uh, for R&D works about uh, well, this uh, research is also uh, should be comp uh, accompanied by uh, uh, reports uh, as uh, for materials uh, uh, well, uh, for the application uh, it uh, should contain application not only a description but uh, also uh, some particularities uh, features uh, there should be uh, made a reference uh, to analogs or also equivalents it means that you have studied uh, the whole situation and you have something to work with and so when you uh, uh, make this application uh, that 
then it goes uh, to relevant authorities. Uh, as for our patent system, we have a special Federal Institute for Industrial uh, Property, or FIPS. Uh, this is a special subdivision of uh, the service uh, uh, called uh, Ross Patent. We pay a uh, certain commission at every single level, then we send application, and then we wait for a number to be attributed. Uh, uh, and then uh, the, uh, we proceed to the most difficult stage, which is called expertise, which includes uh, two sub-stages. First, the formal expertise uh, uh, studies the materials and application just to make sure that all the materials are correct. And after that, uh, a special commission should be paid. And then we proceed to the most important part of the expertise. And then it can last for months or even a year. So an average, uh, well, this application uh, and work with this application takes up to one year, uh, judging from uh, the experience of Sovomash. Everything should be studied, everything like equivalents, uh, technical level, everything. Uh, also, the difference between the products and already existing uh, uh, I mean, the trademarks or products uh, that uh, are available on the market. Uh, uh, also, uh, uh, usually at this uh, stage, uh, uh, there might be some disputes uh, whether or not actually products might uh, be actually patented. Uh, we also have to respond uh, to the whole procedure. And so then we send final materials. Then, after that, uh, some time passes and uh, we finally receive conclusion and a report uh, regarding the fact whether or not a patent can be actually given. So, yes, this is a uh, uh, very um, subjective uh, process. Uh, something that is really difficult for a specialist it's not that difficult to do that uh, but uh, we understand that there are a lot of uh, bureaucratic issues uh, sometimes it so happens uh, that uh, uh, the solution cannot be patented and means that uh, you have to prepare a different one so your task in this uh, sense uh, um, is just to explain that it's uh, probably not correct uh, and then another procedure is launched uh, and uh, when you get patent if you get a patent at the end of the day, then you can use it for 20 years. Uh, you can proceed uh, to uh, production of your products uh, at the same time, being sure that it is fully patented. Uh, you can use your technical solution uh, to your own interest, uh, to your own benefit, and you can use it uh, with uh, your range of products. Sometimes I read comments on YouTube and social networks. Uh, uh, well, and we understand some uh, trollers, uh, haters uh, uh, try uh, to uh, sometimes criticize us uh, uh, regarding, I mean, whether or not actually we can be patented. Uh, and they say, uh, we have read about your products, about patents, and uh, well, this is just nothing. It seems like they know nothing about patents. I would like to explain you one thing. Why, uh, when it comes uh, to description of the products and uh, the ways we use the patents, why it can actually be used uh, as it actually specified an instruction. So, uh, the main goal of the patents uh, is uh, to reveal the most important features of the products, uh, where you can see the difference between your products and uh, some equivalents uh, or products uh, that are similar to you uh, uh, within the market. Uh, uh, if, for example, construction documents uh, were supposed uh, to be handed over directly, then uh, this uh, barrier could be easily avoided. So we need to, to substantiate our points of view. On one hand, we should provide the genuine information, but on the other hand, we also should uh, give uh, more details and uh, uh, provide all the necessary information for specialists. Uh, we need uh, to make our technical uh, uh, specification and everything uh, quite transparent. Uh, the more patents we have uh, with a certain uh, area, uh, well, the more difficult it is uh, for trawlers trolls uh, to uh, actually uh, organize this kind of patent trollers. So so you think that uh, it's not going to happen to us? Well, we'll try to do our best uh, uh, to avoid this problem. Yes, so there is a problem of coping. I think that we would like to talk about this issue. So we are not uh, protected against coping, right? But what if we just cope it somewhere abroad and uh, similar products will be actually uh, manufactured there abroad? Well, let's work from the fact uh, that uh, uh, that uh, nothing is actually protected against uh, coping. That is why, uh, in order to have this kind of protection, we should use different strategies. First uh, one, well, you need to patent within the patent uh, system within uh, this market uh, you would like uh, to enter uh, with uh, your solution. And uh, point number two is uh, strategy of the so-called uh, advanced development. Uh, I would like to say a few words about uh, such a thing as the price of uh, coping. 
um, it's uh, very important uh, to have your own uh, patent uh, policy and uh, development in such a way where the price of copying for your competitors uh, would uh, be uh, very, very high. So uh, it uh, would not be just reasonable for them uh, to copy something and uh, would be not reasonable uh, to use it. Uh, uh, this is actually uh, the uh, task of uh, developers. Uh, so when we develop a certain solution, engineers in future, now they know how it can be improved in future, how to make it cheaper. For example, they uh, organized uh, uh, certain uh, cost analysis and uh, they know several steps ahead what they will be doing. So while one uh, solution uh, is copied, uh, then you can put into the market uh, a different uh, solution or maybe a number of solutions. Uh, so uh, this is uh, what we can say about this particular approach. Number two advanced uh, 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 development. And so why Sobomash doesn't have like any international patents uh, or any patents abroad? So as of today, we know that uh, patent in, in Russia, that is enough because it covers the goals of the company set uh, for uh, today. But at the same time, uh, when it comes uh, to opportunity itself to have a patent abroad, it is still feasible. It depends uh, on the market we would like to enter and uh, the market we will be where we will present it. I would like to say that uh, these issues related to, to patents uh, and uh, actually maintenance of these patents, uh, that is uh, not something uh, that is uh, free. And in this sense, I would like to say that uh, we should bear that uh, in mind as well. We need to think about uh, different things uh, like the cost and many others. Uh, you shouldn't forget about the also political economic situation right now. Thank you very much uh, for uh, such uh, detailed information. Yes, it's true. Uh, we should uh, think that uh, and we understand that it's a very important uh, uh, issue. Alexander and Yana, they uh, uh, managed uh, to share some very important uh, details, something that is left behind the curtain and uh, neither participants uh, of the project or some uh, business participants, so to say, uh, they know nothing about that. Uh, and since uh, this kept a secret, uh, uh, well, uh, our colleagues can actually make uh, our dreams, ideas and goals come true, something that we are striving to achieve. Well, uh, actually, right now, I would like uh, to summarize uh, uh, the uh, speech, I mean, the presentation of uh, the Sovomash uh, uh, company, uh, developers, and experts, uh, uh, well, the point is that the project itself uh, is unique um, in its nature. Why is it unique? Because, like I said at the beginning, at the beginning of my speech, because it unites a big number of uh, different people all around the world. And, uh, of course, uh, we can be united by different uh, topics, uh, by different uh, projects. Of course, you can collect stamps, uh, you can collect wine, uh, you can do whatever you want. Uh, but uh, our task is quite... Uh, difficult and it's not that trivial uh, we perform the function of uh, that very mechanism that actually popularized uh, innovative business uh, well uh, and uh, apart from that also we create business we create a business of a new technological environment uh, that is something that was uh, uh, mentioned by Yana uh, we need to create a product uh, that is uh, is absolutely uh, complicated uh, uh, when it comes to coping something that can hardly be copied that is what we wanted to create technological equipment, uh, technologies themselves, uh, principles uh, used by Solo Marsha. This is something that should be absolutely complicated to be copied. That is the point. Uh, and, uh, well, uh, it tells us a lot about our policy. We are moving in the right directions. And thanks to our success in future, we will be able to multiply and scale up our task, our products, and we will be able to think about uh, some new strategic uh, directions. Uh, well, just think about that, uh, uh, how important it is. Uh, maybe it uh, does not sound that real, but uh, we need uh, to think uh, about these issues. Uh, well, you know, we are united and all together we can do a lot. We just really can simply do that. So we are very close to very, very uh, important stage. So just uh, right over there, behind the window, you can see that building we have just been talking about. And uh, in the near future, we will be able to use it. Uh, and uh, you will see zero production of uh, controllers, of engines, uh, and not only. Thank you very much uh, for your participation. Thank you very much for your attention. So uh, this positive note, our uh, official part is over. Thank you very much, uh, Alexander. Uh, I would like to thank our colleagues from Sovomash. 
So, dear colleagues, meanwhile, we uh, keep on working. We will be talking about uh, technologies, about uh, innovations. So, uh, uh, actually, we have two more speakers, uh, half an hour, and after that, we are going to have a lunch break. Uh, so, in case uh, you are tired, no worries. Very soon, you will have a chance to eat something. And now, I would like to invite you to this uh, stage uh, a very nice person, an expert in the sphere of innovations, a person who is actually uh, promoting innovations all around the world, not only ours, uh, but he also uh, cooperates uh, with the different, uh, uh, also uh, other companies, Kiramjit Sethi. So he will tell us how he actually perceived the development of uh, something uh, we have been talking uh, right now. Uh, well, and he will also be talking about the niche of our technologies in uh, the sphere of electric engines. So Kiramjit, Kiramjit, please, I would like to invite you to the stage. Today I would like to tell you a few words about uh, uh, markets uh, and how it actually develops. So, for example, when we talk about uh, figures and about uh, salaries, uh, about uh, bank payments, uh, uh, what kind of figures uh, you could uh, bring about? Now I would like uh, to find out uh, how many loans uh, do you take. Uh, raise your hands, those who have already uh, borrowed something. Like, uh, uh, have you ever... Uh, we, uh, in Russia, we do not take loans. And when we talk about uh, these figures, how do they impact uh, decision-making process? Well, no response. Who actually takes loans? We don't take loans at all. So now I would like to show you uh, one slide where you can find uh, general information about loans in different spheres. So here, for example, you can see uh, a standard uh, induction engine where a Slavyanka technology will be used. And on this slide you can see top 10 spheres where Slavyanka can actually be used. So space technologies, construction, medical equipment, uh, and uh, different production and uh, engineering production, uh, electric transport, uh, equipment uh, for mining, uh, household uh, uh, devices, uh, and so on and so forth. And this, you can see global market of asynchronous engines. For example, just take a look at uh, 2021. The size uh, was uh, $18.4 billion. And 
And uh, according to the prediction, uh, 2027, uh, the size will be $30.2 billion. It means that the general um, uh, growth is uh, 88%. And here you can see segmentation of uh, the engine markets where actually and uh, such as synchronous engines uh, are used. You can see on this uh, graph that 17% uh, uh, goes for asynchronous engines. And 77% uh, is uh, uh, engines uh, on permanent magnets. And we have to understand uh, this uh, market sector uh, with 77%. Uh, this is a very important sector because there we can get a lot of orders. Here we can see that at present we are exposed to a big number of challenges, for example, pollution. And here you can see um, the carbon emissions. And one fifth of uh, these emissions uh, uh, is produced uh, by the uh, transport sector. And 90% uh, is from uh, uh, diesel cars. And here you can see uh, 385 people uh, prematurely died because of this pollution. And mainly from China and India. So you can understand how serious this problem is. Today, what we want is green life and green energy. For that, we need to go for green electric energy and green cars electric cars on this slide uh, you can see a prediction uh, uh, for the development of electric uh, cars uh, in the world uh, this is something that we uh, had uh, in 2020 and what we're going to have in 2025 and uh, we can see that by uh, 2035 almost all the cars uh, will be electric cars and we can see this uh, situation in Europe followed by the USA and China On this slide, we can see investments uh, going in the sector of electric cars. We can see that uh, in 2020, uh, investment scope was uh, $329 billion. And in order to collect uh, 229 billion dollars, we will need another 10 years for that. And 
We can see that starting from January to October 2020, uh, over a period of uh, 10 months, uh, 100 million dollar investment went uh, to the sector of electric uh, mobiles, electric cars. You can imagine how fast uh, this sector of electric cars uh, will be developing in future. We understand so that any investor wants to invest in that project where the segment is really good and there is a good potential as well. And that is why a lot of uh, industries, uh, they invest uh, uh, serious uh, money uh, in this particular sector. Here you can see a statement from Minister of Transport and Roads on the 7th of June. He said that the price for all electric cars will be equal to this price of cars operating on petrol, and it will happen within a period of one year. We know that at present uh, people do not uh, buy electric cars uh, because uh, their price is 40-50% uh, higher than those uh, operating on petrol. However, when uh, the price of uh, petrol cars and electric cars will be the same, then of course the demand for electric cars will go up. And uh, on this slide you can see those figures that we are talking about right now. So uh, this is a um, uh, special prediction uh, for the development of electric cars markets uh, uh, for um, uh, this period of time. For a period up to 2025, you can see how this market uh, has grown starting from 2019 up to 2025. So it has grown tremendously. So we can see that in 2019 the volume was uh, uh, 103 uh, billion dollars, uh, and uh, then it will grow even further. And we can see that uh, Tuk Tuk market in 2019 was 2 million. And by 2019, uh, sorry, uh, so in 2019 it was uh, 0 0.42 uh, million dollar, and in 2025 it will be 1 million. Electric cars in 2019, the market was 5,000. And in 2025, uh, it will be 540,000 units. Then, a passenger electric cars in 2019, it was 3,600. And uh, by 2025, uh, it uh, will achieve the threshold of uh, 270,000 units. Electric bars, 2019, it was 400. And by 2025, it will be 6,000. And uh, here you can see a uh, prognosis for uh, this uh, market engineer. When we talk about induction engine, we can see that here we have one point uh, twenty three billion dollars, then one point eighty six billion. This is uh, battery. 
and uh, 1.47 this is uh, for uh, power electronics and uh, 0 0.23 uh, million dollars uh, for charging stations here you can see uh, all the advantages of uh, the Slavyanka winding for example it uh, allows uh, to save a lot of uh, uh, electricity it uh, reduces uh, noise level it reduces winding temperature it improves uh, the uh, category of uh, uh, engine efficiency and also uh, production cost also goes down thank you very much Kiranji, thank you very much uh, for your presentation. So, on this uh, positive note, uh, we would like uh, to continue our official part. And uh, right now, we are going to speak not about uh, technologies, uh, but uh, we will be rather speaking about investment and uh, our results. After that, we will have uh, 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 Q&A session. So, if you have questions, uh, please uh, start uh, preparing them. And uh, then this uh, part uh, will take approximately one hour and 15 minutes. After that, we all together will go towards the construction site. And uh, there we will spend uh, as much time as we want. I think that we can start. And we will start straight away with the most interesting part. We will start with the content and we will be talking about the results, figures uh, and also achievements uh, and it will be reflected in figures uh, because figures uh, is uh, the best reflection of our results. Uh, Pavel Shatsky, uh, he will tell us about that. Thank you very much, Pavel. So once again, I would like uh, to welcome you in uh, our very warm, cozy environment. Today we will summarize uh, some intermediate results as of today, I mean uh, 2022. What do we have? Uh, to begin with, I would like, uh, well, while our guests are taking seats, I would like to ask you who are there here with us uh, in this hall. Please raise your hands if you are an investor. Do we have uh, any of uh, people who haven't uh, uh, invested yet? Do we have partners promoting our project? Thank you. Super, thank you very much. So let's start with figures. This is something that I really want to talk about. As of today, we have uh, uh, 46, uh, almost 47 uh, co-owners of uh, Sobomash. I would like to congratulate you on that. You are overwhelming majority here today. So in total, in our personal cabinet, we have uh, uh, over 360,000 uh, participants. That means that these people have a certain potential uh, Well, uh, regarding our current uh, uh, projects and also our future project. It also means that uh, these uh, people know a lot about the project, about the company and uh, technology. As of today, thanks uh, to our partners, uh, and uh, we have uh, them, I mean, not only uh, 14,000, we have uh, uh, 85,000 partners all around the world, and out of them, four. 10,300 people uh, out of them. Uh, these are people who earned uh, a lot uh, uh, during this time because they stayed with us. A very interesting piece of information, right? So if we talk about investments, uh, uh, Pavel Ahmedov, please, your attention, your attention, please. So as of uh, today, we attracted for the project uh, 47 over 47 uh, uh, million dollars so this is our money this is your money and thanks to this money uh, we will go to the construction site and we will see what uh, they were used for over 67 thousand 
investment packages uh, were sold and over 23 billion shares were registered. So and, uh, this is something that was given uh, to our investors. I would like to remind you that investors uh, will be given their future uh, profits and dividends uh, equivalent uh, to uh, these uh, shares. Uh, the solar group uh, company uh, well, owns nothing and all the shares 100% uh, uh, belong uh, to our investors uh, and well, of course uh, to us as well. And uh, if we talk about uh, the number of investors uh, this year, India, and I would like to congratulate it uh, on this uh, well, actually, it was uh, the front runner, uh, the winner, compared to other countries. My congratulations. Uh, then goes Russia, then go national representatives, uh, and, uh, well, you, yes, yes, you can take pictures, but at the same time, uh, Russia, in terms of investments, is number one. Uh, and uh, I should say that uh, here we have uh, biggest uh, checks. Uh, I would like to mention so that uh, this year of Vietnam, in terms of investments, uh, did better than India this month. But uh, they have uh, this uh, permanent, uh, uh, you know, fight between the number of investments and also some other factors. We also have national uh, representative offices, uh, 19 of them, all around uh, the world. Uh, in uh, some of them, uh, we have uh, offices uh, in uh, these uh, representative uh, branches. So we have uh, consultations, we organize events with our existing, with our potential customers, and uh, also uh, with um, uh, also, uh, yes, our customers, so they get more and more interested in our business. Also, this year, we plan to open at least uh, uh, other three uh, representative offices uh, in Latin America, Europe, and uh, in Asia. I would like to say a few words uh, about uh, these people. You can see them right now on the screen. Sergei Semyonov, and thanks to him, actually, the company was established. Pavel Filipov, he's responsible uh, for advertising and uh, public relations. Um, I don't even know how many hours and webinars uh, uh, he uh, organized. Pavel Shatsky, it's me, Alisa Kuznetsova. This is our uh, heads of the partnership uh, network. Uh, she's responsible for developing this network. She creates a special infrastructure so that partners uh, can uh, actually uh, work successfully. Evgeny Lavrinov, uh, uh, he's responsible for customer service and we will touch upon um, every department, and uh, Vitaly uh, Averyanov. Uh, this is our IT director. Let's give them a round of applause. I would like uh, to say a few more words uh, about people cre who create uh, this uh, infrastructure. And thanks to this infrastructure, we managed uh, to have uh, this amount of uh, financing and uh, this financing in general. And I would like to touch upon uh, some aspects uh, of it uh, and say a few words about uh, some indicators. Uh, I think that I should start with the financial department. Uh, this is uh, the key aspect. And thanks to it, uh, we uh, create uh, financial infrastructure so that uh, people can actually replenish their personal accounts uh, uh, and cabinets. And uh, also, we can work with uh, uh, referral uh, compensation, etc. As of today, uh, we have uh, 30 ways to replenish uh, and uh, to actually add money to your account. Uh, that's a lot. Even for alternative projects, uh, that is a lot. Uh, well, we also would like to say a few words about uh, customer service. Uh, right now, we have uh, uh, support uh, for uh, uh, 30 uh, languages, so uh, they work uh, with over 150 different uh, um, requests. They are also responsible for making calls. And uh, we also have, uh, well, no, in total, I would say that we have uh, uh, 14 languages, but we also have special automated uh, translation uh, systems. I would like to touch upon the uh, partners' departments. As of today, we have uh, uh, um, 
11 official representatives. Uh, well, sometimes uh, in uh, some countries, uh, not only just one or uh, four to five uh, partners actually responsible for the country. And also we have curators uh, working with national partners and we have uh, 85,000 partners all around the world. So I would say that, uh, yes, uh, 80 5,000 distributors are selling our investments and so then they will be able to sell other goods as well. Also, a few words about marketing. In marketing, we have 15 employees in total and we have 89 employees right now officially working the company. Our company is diversified all around the world. And also, in addition, we also work with translators. We have 21 translators working with us. Uh, as of today, uh, uh, we uh, per month, uh, uh, 20 languages, uh, marketing department uh, issues 45 pieces of news and 20 out of them were presented in the uh, form of a video. And uh, also they are translated in 28 languages and we sell or send uh, over 1 million letters every month. Uh, you probably uh, saw that uh, we uh, changed the uh, personal account. Uh, right now it has uh, a new appearance. It allows us uh, to uh, scale uh, everything up and it allows uh, users uh, to quite safely use the personal account. And uh, the technology that uh, we are now using, this is the most modern technology. Uh, this uh, technology is also used uh, by Google and Facebook. Also this year we launched our personal uh, offer you can download it at apple store and also at google marketing uh, it has um, uh, uh, special information content but then we also uh, add uh, some additional functions and you will be able to find them in the personal account as well uh, right now our team is uh, working on creating our own payments uh, service and uh, it uh, will minimize uh, risks uh, but also commission for transaction And I would like to say a few words about uh, our legal department. Uh, well, people sometimes think uh, solo group, what it's all about? Is it one company? But in fact, uh, we have uh, at least uh, eight legal entities registered all around the world. And uh, also we plan uh, to uh, uh, also register two more legal entities so that we can operate uh, in a safe uh, uh, mode. Uh, let's give a round of applause to our team. And thanks to this team, we actually achieved those uh, results that we have. And now I would like to give the floor to our national partners and also those uh, delegations uh, uh, who actually came over. And I would like to start with Russia. Oh, no. No, I don't want to. I forgot. So uh, 2023 is uh, coming. And uh, what do you think we plan to do this year? Yeah. Uh, we plan to finalize financing and we would like to do it successfully and of course uh, we would like to uh, get uh, some kind of uh, profit uh, so what do we need for that uh, Pavel Ahmedov your attention please uh, we need uh, to collect uh, this kind of uh, money uh, only uh, 12 uh, uh, million dollars that is it and I would like to remind you that uh, right now we have a special uh, campaign or a special offer. Uh, well, I think that you are quite aware of it, but right now you can really successfully invest in uh, the project. Uh, you uh, can restore your investment package, uh, you can increase it and at the same time uh, buy it. Uh, what is that? 5%? Uh, no, you can buy up to 50% of uh, shares in your personal account. You can go to your personal account, you buy new packages, and then you increase your share. And now you know everything, how much money you collected, how you shares you have, etc., etc. And then you increase uh, your assets. Uh, and so now a few words about national partners. Uh, and so let's uh, welcome Alexander. Uh, good afternoon, dear friends, dear partners. I'm really glad uh, that I have such an opportunity to speak in front of you. My name is uh, Alexander Manjula, and uh, I'm 
uh, been with the project uh, with the uh, with the project uh, uh, ever f f from the beginning I've been an investor all the time and a partner and I'm trying to promote this uh, uh, project uh, uh, within my area and uh, I also a national partner uh, in uh, Russia and if uh, we talk about about my country you know that uh, uh, the situation geopolitical situation is not uh, that uh, stable nowadays and of course it has a certain impact on our project many Russian companies companies uh, uh, just uh, left the uh, Russian uh, market, but at the same time, you know, uh, uh, well, uh, if you listen to webinars by Mr. Dunov, uh, demand is still there. Well, in fact, uh, this is time of great opportunities for us, uh, for our company. Uh, yes, we can uh, just uh, show our capacity, we can fill in some new niche, and uh, we are doing everything that we can do. So uh, uh, the building we are actually constructing today, it's already working, and it is supposed to generate a profit for us. Now time is ripe uh, to do that, because uh, it is would be really efficient. The team, uh, uh, our team, and uh, the team of Mr. Durinov, uh, we are all doing everything we can uh, to uh, really achieve achieve that uh, me as a national partner uh, and uh, with me being an active partner I am trying to do everything I can to achieve this goal uh, well July was a special month in this matter we have exceeded uh, the uh, actually expectation that we have by over 200 uh, uh, percent I would like to express my words of gratitude uh, to our active partners uh, who work without a stop because you are our driving force uh, moving us uh, towards one common goal uh, and uh, apart from that, uh, well, I should say that uh, if we um, do not stop, uh, if we do not slow down, if uh, we uh, this month uh, achieve even better results, uh, then we'll be able uh, to uh, really achieve the goal that we have. We're talking about utilities. Um, or well, engineering networks, utilities, uh, uh, and uh, we need to, to close it by 300%. Uh, and I have a special offer for uh, each of you and for everyone in this room. What can we do? How can we actually improve our financing? How can we actually speed up? Each of you uh, has uh, uh, a mobile phone. You have a cell phone, and now you have a unique opportunity to visit the construction site. You can actually see it. And you can use it for your own self. Uh, just make a, a video uh, of you uh, in the front uh, near this building, uh, because of those uh, who just uh, saw pictures of this building uh, or in some materials, uh, well, probably uh, you have had an opportunity to share your emotions, but now you can use a video uh, and uh, to share your emotions. Uh, some of my friends and people who know me, uh, they never believed that we would be able to construct such a building. And now we can clearly state, yes, we achieved this goal. So make a video of your own self, say a few words about the uh, building, and say a few words about finance, and say about your impressions. We are active partners we should do everything we can to uh, actually uh, achieve our goals and uh, to build everything on time and to do everything on time thank you very much thank you very much and I would like to invite uh, Gilles Weber to this stage Gilles uh, he is a national uh, partner I think it's uh, all the French speaking countries Maybe in almost, almost all the countries. And also, he's the first uh, national partner, and uh, we uh, uh, created infrastructure with him, uh, and uh, he was uh, there at the beginning, and uh, together we created uh, our model. Thank you very much for your contribution. Over to you. Uh, good afternoon. Um, have you actually uh, participated in the event in 2019? So there are a lot of uh, you, and you remember uh, I told you back then, uh, just uh, uh, roll your sleeves and uh, start working. Look at me, what happened to me. Pas grave. 
aujourd'hui, euh, on, me, on, on dit que je suis partenaire national de plein de pays. So this is just a short introductory part, and in case you didn't understand, that is okay. Today I am a national partner and representative in a number of countries. Well, in fact, uh, I have a lot of uh, different positions and a lot of different, uh, uh, I mean, uh, the roles that I sometimes forget about them. I'm a national representative uh, in uh, seven countries and I have a lot of work to do. Because uh, some people, they already believe in the project uh, and uh, I guide them, I manage them, but also there are still some people who don't believe yet and I need to make them believe in, in the project. I am a, a national representative uh, in six uh, African countries. And uh, I remember how I came to Russia absolutely uh, alone. And uh, today I have a great opportunity to come over with my friends from Africa, uh, people from Benin, Togo, Cameroon and Senegal. And also out of them some people for the first time ever left the African continent. And can you imagine the first country they visited out of Africa is Russia. And uh, you know, uh, and they invested, uh, and so when they invested, uh, uh, of course, uh, they expected a lot and they want to have uh, something in return. And uh, you know, Alisa Kuznetsova, she uh, often says uh, she, she, she likes the so-called storytelling. And I would like also to uh, practice uh, my storytelling here. In uh, April 2020, I organized the conference in Benin. And in April 2020, you remember what happened. Uh, COVID appeared. And unfortunately, I was uh, stuck in Benin. But uh, it turned out that uh, there is a blessing in disguise. And uh, back then, when it happened, uh, I was told uh, it just happened. Uh, I was told that uh, nothing was possible because of COVID. It was not possible to organize physical conferences. And uh, yes, I was told uh, that was not possible and said, no, everything is possible. Uh, And after that, I started to think, uh, okay, so I'm running in circles, I cannot uh, be isolated and to be on lockdown for two months, because we have already planned a conference. And at this very moment, uh, together with my assistant Barbara and my friend Alphonse from Benin, we started uh, to organize the physical presentations. And so within a period of several months, we managed uh, to register over 800 uh, people. Even though at this very time, people kept saying, well, COVID is there and it's not possible to do that. I hope that uh, you uh, understand that uh, so for this partnership, it's not uh, easy to deal with it, uh, but still you should keep on working. It is all possible. And I would like to welcome a, a person who means a lot to me today. 
This is actually my assistant, and uh, thanks uh, to her, I already spent uh, two uh, years in Africa. And she also uh, my girlfriend right now. And so let's give a round of applause to Barbara. Barbara, are you with us? Please, Maestro, bring on some music. Thank you, Barbara. Thank you very much. I hope that you now understand why I decided to stay in Africa for such a long time. I hope. Uh, you're going to have uh, also such an assistant, just like her. I really wish you that. Uh, well, you understand, when you have such an assistant day and night, uh, you can earn maximum money, and I wish you that. Thank you. Thank you, Gilles. Oh, I should take a deep breath. So, and now I would like uh, to invite uh, a delegation from India and uh, Nepal national uh, partner, Birdie Kurshan Kumar. Let's give a round of applause. Do you remember that uh, India did better than Russia in terms of uh, the number of investors? And that is thanks to this gentleman. Hello. How are you doing? So today I learned uh, two new phrases. And I'm trying to understand Russian. So one day I will come here and I will be able to speak Russian. I don't want to speak too much about uh, the project right now because uh, our management and our representative have already given you all the details. I can see how much energy is here in this room. I want uh, us to be respectful of each other. Let's stand up to our feet. Let's stand up, let's stand up, dear friends. So this is round of applause uh, for all of us. And applause to the interpreters working simultaneously right now. We all speak with each other because we, we can uh, and the world can understand each other only thanks to our interpreters. 
First of all, we respect each other and then we respect those who help us. We also respect and also thank Julia for the fact that she made it possible for everyone to come here and would like uh, to help uh, everyone involved, our management team. And now you can take your seat. Thank you very much. I would like to explain those things happening right now in the world. When this project uh, started, uh, uh, well, you know, uh, well, a, a lot of things happened in the world. Well, COVID uh, and many other problems, uh, climate change and many other things, uh, you know. But at the same time, what kind of positive energy did we derive from this? Our project never stopped, not for a single day. So we have really grown. Nobody talks about this, but we should say that uh, well, our money is absolutely safe. You know why? Because we don't even believe how much we are doing for that. We don't believe that tomorrow we will be able to wake up. Well, first believe in yourself and then believe uh, in the project. Stand in front of uh, the mirror and uh, please think what you actually want to do in this life. We are alive. Uh, people ask me why I don't sleep that much. Well, when I die, then I will be able to sleep a lot. But I want to leave my footprint. Just like uh, Dmitry Duyunov. He has pretty much the same philosophy. But for some reason, we don't uh, even help those people around us. I like this beautiful world. So here we have our friends from Nigeria, from Africa, from Latin America. Well, probably uh, people think that uh, these countries are poor, India is uh, poor, or Russia is poor. But these countries actually are developing right now. Why do I invest in this country? We opened two companies in two countries, and Yelena Maximiliana, I was there, the illegal entities there. I believe in my own self. I believe that uh, uh, something that I'm doing, this is the right thing. When uh, you share the same philosophy and believe in yourself, then your life will change. Just like Jules Weber, you will take off your coat, your jacket, Like those, like like Jill, you will take off your jacket, and uh, you will have such a beautiful assistant, and uh, you are gonna have this kind of feeling, these emotions. But we should also help uh, our uh, neighbors develop, grow, those in our countries and in other countries as well. And if uh, you already participate in this project, why don't you do something to make other people be aware of this project? Or, so there are two options. Either you don't want to earn more or probably you don't want others uh, to earn more. I suggest that everybody should share the same philosophy, really. Welcome to Solar Group. Welcome to the project uh, Do You Know Motors. Thank you very much. I would like to thank everyone for your attention. Thank you.
curatori rispetto a tutti i curatori che se non siete voi anche magari non siamo qui anche. I would like to also thank all the curators Dimitri he is now working day and night I respect him as a friend not just as a curator and yes thank you thank you Bertie Uh, can I also invite you to the stage? Yes. Namaste. Good afternoon. Namaste. I am Anandro from India. I have been with this company starting from 2019, January. Before that, I worked in Indian Navy. I worked as a technical engineer. So, my life was linked with this issue of these engines for over 20 years. And when I heard about this project, about this uh, project, uh, I uh, realized that uh, it was going to be productive and really efficient for us in India. And today I would like to say how uh, in India, how we got in India uh, um, financial independence thanks to this project. Well, you know, in a solo group project, you can start earning uh, and uh, uh, invest. This is a great opportunity. My team consists of uh, 1,300 uh, members. And as you know, uh, if you really want uh, to become rich very quickly, you should have uh, two to three things. Well, if you are not married, then you should uh, find uh, a rich girl and marry her. Or, for example, probably your parents uh, might uh, uh, leave something for you after their death. And the third option is the so-called robbery, or when you can, or stealing, when you can steal something. And uh, option number four is investment. There are four types of people. Employ, self-employed, businessman, or investor. We actually have uh, this uh, number four option. We are talking more about uh, uh, such a, a scenario when we can become investors. So you have a unique opportunity. If you have a certain sum of money, even a small sum of money, you can invest it. Uh, in uh, 25 or uh, 26, uh, you will be uh, able uh, to really make a profit. Uh, 
to India. This is a great opportunity in flow investment that is uh, credible. And uh, the Minister of India, he said that, that the cost of uh, diesel car and electric car, well, it will be pretty much the same. They will, it will be equal. So India has special plans considering the population of India, considering uh, pollution and so all the state plans uh, uh, in India. Well, I'm absolutely sure that uh, solar group and the doing of projects, uh, they will play a big role there. All those uh, spheres of life uh, where in India you can actually use electricity, for example, electric instruments, uh, transport, uh, all these opportunities are actually giving. So that is why I would like to ask you to do that. I want you to disseminate information about this technology and uh, do it with many people as possible. But before we make it uh, to stock exchange, you can also make a lot of money on referrals. I would like also to uh, appeal to you like I said, you should uh, tell about this technology about, uh, to other people. But as for my Indian colleagues, I would like to say that the country is really big. There are a lot of different spheres of activities. It means that it represents a lot of opportunities for you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, yes, these are our colleagues from Nepal. Not long ago, we opened a representative office in Nepal. And uh, that is why they did uh, better than Russia in terms of the number of investors. Let's uh, give them the floor because uh, they made a real uh, contribution for the project. I would like to welcome everyone. We are all from Nepal. My name is Rabha. I have been with this project for two years. Nepal just in case you know, Nepal is uh, located uh, near the Himalaya mountains. And I always wanted to visit Russia. And finally, I'm here. And so now I'm really proud. I am just even above these mountains. Solar group is the reason to that. First, I would like to thank Solar Group Company on behalf of my company, on behalf of my people. 
हमारे देश में नेपाल में बाहर कंट्री में इन्वेस्ट करना मना है According to the rules of uh, the government of Nepal, it is forbidden to invest uh, into foreign uh, projects. Crowd uh, investing, this is also a forbidden concept. Cryptocurrency, no, well, just forget about this. But as you can see, we're still doing that. Because we believe in the project and we believe in Solar Group. Because this is uh, a technology of the future. Nepal is a landlocked country. We do not manufacture cars. The country is really small. But our heart is really big. We are from such a country that everything, I mean, we do uh, everything that we film or we take pictures. Well, it's not possible to take it with us, but still we are doing that. Uh, because we, we do believe uh, in uh, Solar Group. Uh, we believe uh, in uh, the project. We believe in this company. Just like I said, uh, it is uh, forbidden to invest uh, in foreign companies, uh, crowdfunding and uh, uh, cryptocurrency are forbidden. We have a lot of cities and we also have a lot of different types of small transport uh, riding uh, along uh, small roads. And also a very important uh, factor is that we don't have any oil. I don't know whether this uh, technology is important for you, but just like I said, it is very important to us. And uh, that is why, despite all the bans, I managed uh, to make such a team of 500 people. We collected over half a million dollars. And we did it without any conferences, without any physical conference. We did it online. I know that you don't speak my language. And I don't understand your language either. But we have still one common language, and we don't understand what language I'm talking about. This is the language of success. We all have the same goal. We want to achieve and to get maximum profit. Let's promote uh, the project together, as well as technology. If uh, uh, we can do it, despite all the difficulties and all the bans, then you can also do that. We want to market in Nepal, but 
नेपाल ने इस प्रोडक्ट को ले जाके सेल कर सकते हैं बहुत बड़ा डिमांड क्रिएट कर सकते हैं we cannot do that much about the marketing but we want to sell the technology so while I'm on the stage I would like to also uh, build to other uh, partners so you should definitely uh, come over also uh, to find out more about our dealers but anyway we're going to promote uh, this technology together with my team uh, we will be doing everything we can in order to promote the project and the technology itself. Thank you very much. I would like to thank my team. I would like to thank Gursan. I would like to thank Solar Group. And I would like to thank you as well. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm sorry for jumping in. You, you never pay too much attention to uh, insignificant problems. I actually uh, really doubt that uh, you have more serious problems than they do. And after all the bans from the government, they still working. I think that uh, uh, we, we should learn from them. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And now I would like uh, to invite uh, Shukar Umare, national partner from Nigeria. Let's give him a round of applause. So, just uh, uh, according to the protocol, I would like to say that my name is Imaru Shako. Nigeria is a developing market with a population of 220 million people. But we have a problem of leadership. When we came in contact uh, with Solar Group, we hoped that we do understand that that there is an opportunity for each of us to change our level of prof profit, and we really decided to go for this project. We saw this uh, technology, this uh, doing of motor, and uh, we realized that was a great opportunity because in Nigeria we hardly produce up to 500 megawatts. That is why we need alternative sources of energy. And that is why the doing of technology found a place in country like Nigeria. So right now, yes, we have quite an issue with the energy, but we believe that, do you know, for technology is going to offer us uh, uh, such an opportunity and it's going to help us improve our economy. So we have a big plans for the doing of motors in Nigeria. When we came into a uh, solar group, uh, we initially focused on VIP. We have a fundamental problem in Nigeria. In Nigeria, if you don't uh, see the technology with your own eyes, nobody will believe you. So now 
that we have come. We are going back with good news. And we promise that you are going to see multiple people will start coming in the solo group in Nigeria. And also, I came to this conference with the contingents. I have my colleagues here. Could you please come over? Can you please come to the stage? So don't worry, we are not going to waste your time. We will be done in a minute. I would like to take this opportunity and to thank uh, the management of Solar Group. Pavel, Julia, Dima, they've all been very helpful. And also they really guided us. I also want to appreciate Birdie. Birdie has been very helpful for all of us. And I want to tell you that we love you all. Moscow is a very beautiful city. We hope that uh, we keep coming, keep coming and keep coming. Thank you very much. I would like to thank everyone. I would like to thank you. Yes, Dima, thank you. Yes, now I would like to invite uh, Dimitri Dimitrova, national partner from Bulgaria. So I can speak Russian a little bit. I hope that uh, you will be able to understand me. So I'm going to be as brief as possible with my speech uh, because, uh, yes, it's time to go to the construction site, you know. Yes, I took some notes. Well, so what do I want to say? Uh, uh, what, uh, why is this project important for me? Well, for example, electric cars they are going to impact the environment in a good sense of this word, positively. And from this point of view, uh, it's very important to, to mention so this fact that it's going to be positive for the project. In the cities, uh, the temperature, average temperature, is uh, two, three degrees higher than in mountains, for example. And that's very hot for the cars. So this technology uh, we are invested in will allow us uh, to decrease air pollution not only because of exhaust gas but also due to some reasons as well but i am more concerned about the impact of the technology on the industry uh, well uh, uh, it's going to be quite an efficient instrument and it's going to be a really reliable i have worked with different uh, electric instruments for example and i know just to make sure that uh, they have very good uh, properties and uh, just to make sure that it is convenient for them to work with uh, for example you know this uh, instrument which is called bulgarka which uh, actually reminds us about uh, the name of my country bulgaria uh, and uh, in bulgaria uh, we are uh, manufacturing a lot of uh, machine for food industry uh, and uh, also there only electric uh, motors uh, can be used there because of uh, food uh, uh, safety uh, well you know I think that well uh, these engines will definitely are in great demand in this industry that is why I'm investing in this technology because uh, it has a lot of uh, opportunities uh, represents a big opportunities for us and it can be used in different spheres uh, my brother uh, actually uh, acquainted me uh, with the world's investments in 2019. Then I just uh, came across uh, this uh, project called uh, the Doing of Motors. And I would like to say, tell you one thing. You know, the time of risky investments uh, was over in 2019, but right now we are living in a new year. And uh, it's time to accumulate uh, capital and all the investors and all the partners all around the world, they should do that. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. So we have uh, two more delegations and I would like to invite a national partner, uh, Ivan Buchbert from Germany uh, and also a delegation from Germany. I would like to invite you, Ivan. Ivan. 
So Ivan never uh, appears on the stage uh, without uh, applause. Ivan, please take the microphone. Uh, well, uh, good uh, afternoon. I will start in Russian and then continue in German. I would like to invite two partners with me. I came here with them and uh, one of them uh, is a Deutsche Investor. He is German and uh, Vadim. Uh, he is also a partner of the project and he has been a partner starting from 2017. He will help us with the uh, translation. Uh, so please uh, take the microphone. Uh, it was uh, uh, suggested uh, that uh, uh, that we should uh, answer two questions uh, just briefly. But I think uh, Christian, he will tell us why actually Germany got interested in our projects and so why many partners uh, in uh, Germany, they prefer to invest in this uh, project because uh, uh, from the point of view of uh, this uh, approach, I mean, in Germany, I should say, we had uh, uh, this uh, vision that uh, actually people uh, uh, want to earn as partners uh, on this program. There are people who actually make money much faster, but in many cases uh, people earn money because uh, they see uh, some kind of uh, perspective in the, this uh, project. So, Christian, So uh, the first step was uh, uh, to do something uh, to uh, make a, a to actually to earn something. What do you mean to say? Just to make money for my elder years. This is something that has a certain substance. Sometimes have foundation for uh, many many years to come. I wanted to, to find uh, something not just for me, but also for uh, my children, uh, something that would be interesting for my children as well. And uh, uh, I'm an uh, electric engineer by profession, so that is why engines, so this is a very interesting thing for me. And since I'm very close to nature and uh, a lot of energy can be saved with the help of uh, this uh, engine, that is why I'm really interested in this project. And this uh, technology in future could uh, allow uh, me to move without actually producing a negative impact on the environment. And uh, uh, the decision to invest uh, in the solar group uh, was absolutely uh, logical for me because uh, that uh, could be of uh, benefit both for me and for my children as well. I would like to thank you. When I uh, usually stand here, well, uh, you know, 
now I'm standing here and I'm smiling. Uh, usually, you know, when uh, you want uh, to come up to the stage, you make some plans, you have some ideas, and sometimes you start uh, talking about different things. Well, anyway, I would like to say that Germany is a well developed country, and uh, right now Europe uh, is uh, quite uh, uh, in a um, uh, difficult situation, and uh, many people don't uh, understand uh, uh, that, uh, well, there are some ways out. But at the same time, uh, many people think about the future of their children. Uh, well, uh, we in the solar group, uh, we also uh, talked about also uh, special packages uh, for children, for example. People uh, understand uh, that the world right now is changing, and many people see that uh, future belongs uh, to, um, uh, well, actually, this kind of technology. It's very important from the point of view of energy saving. Uh, and uh, yes, we are now living through very hard times, but at the same time, uh, we also understand uh, that even though that we have problems with resources, still there is a way out. That is the point. Uh, so uh, I think uh, that uh, we should also bear that in mind, uh, and it can be used uh, for uh, us and uh, for our children to our benefit. Uh, I mean, those people who already understand that uh, they uh, support our projects and uh, they can really see growth uh, there. Uh, so, uh, like something what uh, I mean happened uh, in IT there, and uh, and also it is happening right now with uh, uh, these technologies and they think that uh, you understand so that uh, uh, so uh, that is why we actually support this uh, project uh, so I think that this is basically it I'm almost done, and here is uh, my final thoughts. A lot of uh, people call me and say, oh, come on, when will we get some money? And so my answer is usually, well, let's just uh, uh, come to a certain final point, and then we'll be able uh, to uh, buy uh, shares back. Uh, uh, so here is my major thought. Uh, today I'm standing in front of you, and I'm really happy because I'm standing here, and that is really great. And the reason to that is that uh, everything that was planned, well, seems like three months, but uh, to me it was like three years. Uh, no, I mean three months for the conference, uh, but I had an opportunity to come over uh, just only, I mean, I mean uh, just only yesterday on the, I mean the day before yesterday uh, yes it seems like I came here at the very last point I went to the consulate service and I came to you I flew to you uh, here so uh, three partners and before uh, uh, well uh, we actually came we had a lot of difficulties so there were delays and different problems and things like that but we stay positive uh, we were really happy and so we really wanted to, to come here and now that I'm standing here I'm really happy and uh, well I think that uh, it's really important to, to bear that in mind and so we should believe in our goal and we should believe that it will definitely come true we will overcome all the difficulties and we will definitely do that so thank you very much. I wish you uh, to stay in a good mood. Thank you. Thank you. I would like to thank you. And uh, here is the final, actually. Not uh, a fine, uh, yes, uh, last, last delegation from Latin America. We would like to unite our guests, our partners, uh, Massimiliano, national partner in Colombia, uh, a national uh, uh, partner in uh, Peru. Please, over to you, Colombia. And Ricardo, curator. My name is Massimiliano Rossini. I'm from Italy, but right now I live in Peru in Latin America. My name is Massimiliano Rossini. I'm from Italy and live in Peru, and I'm a national representative for, uh, of the Solar Group company in this country. Thank 
I would like to introduce my colleagues, Sergei Gileno, Lemin, and Marta. And I would like to thank my colleague uh, Derzy. And uh, if it uh, wasn't for him, I would have never been able to come over. I would like to know how many partners we have here, how many investors we have. So, if you don't mind, could you please just uh, raise your hands or stand up? I wanted to thank you for your work and also I would like to know who are partners and who work as a part of a partner's uh, network. Please raise your hands. Thank you very much. I would like to thank this uh, partnership networks and thanks to it we are here. A lot uh, has been said about uh, this technology and that it has a very positive impact on the environment. Latin America, we're going to have a very um, financial boom, especially in the sphere of technologies. That is why our mission, our main goal is to do business, to make money, and at the same time preserve our planet to protect it. And we also at the same time have a lot of obstacles. Uh, uh, you know, we have a lot of uh, financial pyramids, uh, and so they offer pretty much uh, the same uh, thing. But uh, a company like Solar Group, uh, there are just a few of them. And I think that uh, since we find such a company, no. Um, Point. Uh, it makes no point uh, to look around uh, searching for some other companies because we have found such a perfect company. So what uh, Solar Group uh, does in uh, uh, Latin America, uh, this is, uh, leads uh, to really positive changes. And what happens in Latin America, you can see that, uh, uh, well, a lot also happened to me. I mean, very good things happened to me. I, I changed for the better. I would like to thank uh, uh, Mr. Durinov and I would like to uh, thank uh, Filip, uh, Shatsky, Alisa, everyone, because uh, they uh, learned us, uh, le taught us uh, to be uh, patient and also they taught us uh, to achieve our goals. Of course, 
Alisa, you also have to load our uh, our team. If we really wanted to uh, really achieve our results, then we should really uh, communicate with solo group, a solo march, and all together in order to achieve one common goal. We have to understand that today we just not uh, earn money, but also we build future, not just for us, but also for our families and future generations. I'm saying that because I'm absolutely sure that uh, we can uh, finalize uh, our deal by the end of this year and then we will start helping uh, ourselves and also our families and beloved ones. And of course, so there are certain risks, but this risk is significant. The biggest risk uh, is communication. Uh, we uh, should talk, uh, we should disseminate information, uh, and also we should work with our uh, common ideas. We should uh, work together, uh, together with uh, Colombia. Uh, we should uh, finalize uh, our work, and uh, we should uh, keep on working in this direction. Hola a todos. Es un grandísimo placer estar aquí junto con cada uno de ustedes. Me encantaría ver más mujeres aquí y por qué no mujeres que creen en sí misma, mujeres que tal vez hasta mayores los 40 años, porque no solamente los hombres. Este es también un proyecto para nosotras las mujeres que podemos apoyar a esta tecnología y hacer una grandísima realidad, porque nosotras también queremos el cambio. Well, first of all, I would like to say it's a great pleasure for me to be here today. And I'm a little bit surprised there are not so many women. For some reason, I would like uh, uh, this uh, to also be interesting uh, for uh, uh, women. Uh, I mean, this, I mean, do you know, motors, especially uh, uh, older elder uh, women because we can actually assist, we can actually help. So it would be nice uh, if uh, more women actually joined us. When I started to work with Solo Group, I knew almost nothing about the engines, especially because it was a new idea and documents uh, and everything was only in Russian language.
A good friend of mine, Birdie, helped me to uh, translate all the documents uh, in uh, Italian. I have lived uh, in Italy for 34 years, and uh, when I understood what was written there, I realized uh, that uh, that was meant for me, that uh, that was really interesting for me. And so, uh, yes, uh, the um, whole concept of uh, uh, environmental protection is very close to me. That is why I would like to invite you to disseminate uh, uh, information about uh, this uh, company, about this project. Uh, this project could really help us, not us only, but only future, also future generation. So I am kindly asking um, you to do this uh, so that uh, we can really be successful and happy in this life. So I would like to wish you all the best. Thank you very much. It's a great pleasure for me to be here. My name is uh, Lumedi, I'm from Venezuela. This company uh, came to my life at uh, such a uh, very quite difficult uh, moment in my life and I would like to thank everyone for the opportunity to be a part of it. When I started to work with the Flora Group, I realized that, uh, well, of course, uh, there were certain risks, but just like at any other business. But uh, I realized uh, that uh, if I uh, just accept it, so that is normal, because I want to go for the idea that I liked. One of the most important features about this technology is that it does not pollute the environment. Every year, according to the data, approximately 9 million people die because of pollution. And if we keep on working in this domain, in this area, then we will be able to prevent such a trend. In Latin America, we are really growing, we are developing. Uh, we have also, well, 20 countries, uh, and I hope that others will follow. Uh, we are inviting you to do so. 
and we would like to ask you to disseminate those information about the project and uh, promote it. Uh, and also, uh, and also about do you know motors? And I would like to thank everyone. Um, I would like to thank the whole team for the work that you have accomplished. And I would like to say that we will be doing our best to move forward. And just like we say in Latin America, we will do it with all our power. So I would like uh, to say hello. I'm a representative of the company in Ecuador, and I'm really happy to be here. Uh, well, thank you very much for your invitation. Uh, to me, uh, it was uh, quite an interesting thing that uh, such a company like Solo Group uh, perceived our uh, company, uh, our country, sorry, uh, uh, as a target for investment. I would like to thank uh, Filippo Fashatsky and Massimiliano, uh, who actually invited me to participate in this project because. Uh, in our country, we have a lot of uh, opportunities and uh, quite a big uh, potential, and it would be stupid not to use that. And I would like to highlight it to us that the company is not just about business or about the money. The company also allows us uh, to grow uh, as uh, just human beings. And it's uh, also a very important thing about uh, this uh, uh, project. And I would like to thank you once again, uh, because uh, uh, what we actually do, I mean, uh, makes us um, be better, become better, and I hope that we also help our economy and people around us. So we have already proven to a lot of people that Solar Group is the real thing. We are working, we are growing, and I'm inviting others to do the same thing. Thank you. Thank you very much. I would like to thank you. So you have already understood. Uh, we could uh, talk a lot about the project, about the technology. So we also have a delegation from Vietnam. Please welcome to the stage. Just two minutes. We need Anna. Pasha. So are you going to interpret? Yes. Masha, please. I would like to welcome you. Uh, 
tên đầy đủ là Lê Văn Hưng. Tôi rất vinh dự tôi đến từ đất nước quốc gia Việt Nam. I'm really happy to be here with you. My name is Lê Văn Hưng. I'm from Vietnam. I really want uh, to thank all the employees of uh, the company, all uh, the um, heads, all our leaders for such an opportunity to be here. I learned about uh, the uh, project in 2018 and I decided to participate in it. At first I thought this is just interesting and I uh, didn't even think to invest. I just uh, looked uh, at uh, the products, I uh, only saw those things I was interested in, but I didn't uh, think that I will be a part of the project. I just saw an opportunity, an opportunity that I might participate, and this is uh, real. And uh, this wasn't like just uh, like now everything um, that you already have uh, uh, plans and everything has been built. Uh, and I was really happy. I only thought how I can actually support do enough for his work because uh, it affects the quality of life not only for Russia but also for the uh, world in general. I just wanted to, to support. I wanted to support uh, because uh, that was uh, useful for everyone, for each of us. But uh, I wasn't thinking about me just to earn money. But I, I just thought because it, it is good, because it is interesting, it is useful. And then I realized that it's not just useful, but also it, uh, it is interesting because you can work with people, um, leaders and uh, employees, so they work uh, all together, they are quite patient and I started to participate and I started to work with my group. And now I have uh, over 5,000 uh, people in my group. I um, get acquainted for the investors and many other people, and I'm really happy. Thank you.
Thank you. trong hội trường này hôm nay có có ai là là người mới biết đến dự án này để tìm hiểu không ạ? I wanted to to ask you, do we have any really new participants who have just learned about the project? I think there are no such participants. And so now I really realized that it works and I would like to wish the company a real development. I really want it to be useful for us in future. There is not so much time, and I just want to thank everyone, and see you soon. See you soon. Thank you very much. So let's give a round of applause to those people, thanks to whom we have uh, such a stable position and we are moving to our goal despite the pandemic and all the other things. Yes, I also would like to thank everyone. So I think that uh, in order to uh, bring uh, uh, all here all the participants, well, from all the investing countries, well, uh, no conference would be sufficient. Yes, well, around the world, we are really numerous. So, uh, yes, when we say uh, we, uh, when we use this blog right now, we are done with it. So right now, we proceed to queue in this session. It means that you set the rhythm, you ask questions, and we answer them. I look around, I see someone is already tired, uh, someone has already left. Uh, well, if, uh, I mean, those people who stay here, they are, uh, you know, uh, really important for us, because uh, they will definitely go with us to the construction site, so we will definitely visit it. Uh, so, uh, 20 minutes of work here in this session, and I would like to ask you it in the following manner. Please uh, ask uh, interesting questions, uh, those uh, that would be interesting for everyone. As for personal questions, you can ask them later on on the margins. So, Alexander Sudarev, uh, he is uh, taking pictures, or somebody is taking pictures with him. So, please raise your hands. Uh, question, answer, question, answer. Somebody should help uh, me and just carry microphone. What about the change in the investment uh, stage? Well, I cannot give you the exact date, but I can tell you that it's going to happen this year in the forthcoming months. Do you have uh, one more microphone? Or better have two more microphones? So, on proximity, so Dmitry Alexandrovich, uh, you mentioned some figures during the last webinar regarding Sovermash. Uh, well, actually, I don't remember the exact uh, figure. Uh, you might turn on the webinar and uh, see it uh, because I don't want to give you um, uh, inaccurate figures. So, Dmitry Alexandrovich Durinov, uh, during the last webinar, uh, he uh, mentioned all those uh, figures, uh, uh, what uh, can be found right now at the account of. Uh, um, so much. He also to, he also talked about VAT. He shared a lot of uh, financial information. He also shared information regarding how much was spent on the construction. Yes, uh, he mentioned the general figure was uh, 
forwarded to solar mesh as for uh, solar VAT, it was approximately 25 million rubles. And also he mentioned uh, monthly payments, but I really don't remember the exact figure. We don't want to make a mistake because you will never forgive us for that. So uh, there you can find uh, very transparent information. One one. So my name is Alexander Genio, director of uh, Electromobile uh, company, uh, and uh, we also uh, work uh, with uh, renewable energy and electric cars. I am here, and uh, I have been uh, participating in such conference uh, from the very beginning. I can see your dynamics, and I can see that you are developing. And as uh, electric uh, cars uh, and representative of electric cars, I'm interested uh, in your kind of uh, agents. Uh, our company is going to present uh, quite a number of uh, Russian brands uh, uh, this year. Do you already have uh, some technical uh, requests for the production of uh, electric engines for such a car like uh, EV Lada Largus? Moreover, I would like to say there is such a person as Igor Korhov. Um, you know him, and uh, he uh, has uh, a car, Lada El Lada. So this car, Lada El Lada, initially this is an electric uh, uh, car uh, produced by Avtovas, but uh, in uh, his case uh, it was really transformed, and uh, there he installed an agent with combined winding. Uh, so those uh, characteristics demonstrated by the car, uh, they uh, can compete uh, with uh, the most powerful brands uh, producing a uh, uh, electric uh, transport. I'm not going to share exact figures, but I should say that uh, competence, uh, knowledge, and uh, technical parameters of uh, such a car, uh, we can also do that. So we already have uh, this experience. So actually, I uh, traditionally have uh, three questions. Uh, in uh, Taliati, uh, they uh, manufacture electric uh, car series uh, production. Uh, it's called Zeta. So initially, in uh, the laboratory, uh, we installed your uh, motor wheel, and uh, it uh, uh, didn't uh, actually go because uh, uh, the uh, heavy weight of this uh, motor wheel, uh, well, it's not too heavy for the suspension over the past two years. Have you changed anything technically? I'm talking specifically about the weight of uh, I'm talking about the weight of uh, the motor wheel. I think that uh, you can won't be able to do it manually today, but actually the motor wheel, uh, the first iteration is presented uh, in uh, the room over there uh, with uh, uh, copper rotor and also there we have a, uh, a rotor uh, where we use aluminium and of course uh, the weight is uh, lower right now we are working a lot on motor wheel and based on that uh, uh, also a special elevator which was developed based on this principle and uh, this uh, technology will allow us also to manufacture motor wheels and uh, they will be uh, installed uh, in form of uh, electric uh, uh, drive uh, but at the same time there is a very important but it's true that uh, there is a certain so uh, actually uh, it's also uh, the issue of uh, uh, installation uh, you know that uh, here we of course need to consider such a thing as suspension Solomash has a patent uh, quite a fresh one so to speak and based on um, its result, uh, this is motor wheel can be integrated uh, in uh, the suspension of the car. So thanks such a use of a motor wheel, you have an opportunity to regulate uh, clearance. So clearance, you understand what uh, it means. It can be done in an automated uh, uh, version or it can be done mechanically. So this works can be performed by us. We do understand that we are doing that. So question number third. So when we just started to, to work, uh, you only talk about uh, transport. Right now we have uh, two different uh, subdivisions uh, working with electric cars. So the first one is air transport, and the second one is uh, water transport. So we made uh, uh, two uh, motor boats. They are already tested uh, on the Moscow River. There they have special uh, things. Uh, uh, there should be special protection in terms of wiring, etc. So do you have any kind of uh, preparatory works uh, specifically first uh, for re-equipping uh, of uh, boats uh, for uh, I mean stationary version and also what about uh, uh, light uh, weight, uh, uh, weight uh, uh, electric uh, boats? Uh, do you also work with them? Uh, yes, you know, we can actually uh, estimate and uh, calculate as opposed to for icebreakers. You see, I think that I have uh, answered your question. Thank you very much. Thank you, dear friends. Uh, 
Well, apparently we can see uh, that uh, you are doing a great job. Uh, well, uh, you shouldn't forget uh, that environmentally friendly uh, 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 transport uh, should also be smart, and we started to work with that. Uh, uh, we also wanted to work with taxi and car sharing. If you don't know, uh, last uh, uh, week in China, they started to, uh, to officially use uh, taxi uh, without uh, a, a driver, so unmanned, so to speak. Thank you very much uh, for your question. We have only 15 minutes left. Very quickly, we will try to be as brief as possible with question. Really, we are running out of time. Sergei Shevchenko, are you with us? Sergei Shevchenko, has anyone seen him? Please, someone, the most uh, active and responsible person, can you transport microphone to those who ask questions? Do we have such a person? Yes, someone is supposed to ask questions. My name is Vyacheslav, and I'm entrepreneur, and I'm coordinator uh, for uh, the south of uh, Russia, and also I'm a blog. I'm interested in the following thing. Well, due to the situation today, uh, well, how can actually sanctions affect uh, the uh, solar group company uh, could they actually block all, all the offshore uh, companies uh, and so uh, then we might have a problem so when we wanted to return our shares i would like uh, to say a few words about it uh, well you know that a lot of people are quite uh, concerned about that uh, well as for solar group uh, well you know that solar group is a foreign company that is why in this case uh, sanctions uh, cannot uh, be actually uh, lifted on the company as uh, for blocking any of the companies, uh, you've heard uh, that we have uh, seven uh, legal entities, and even if one of legal entities is blocked, then a uh, group of companies, so group, it will not disappear, and we will be able to uh, perform our activities. Uh, considering the fact uh, that we work in different uh, countries, so we learn to work with different laws, with different governments, I think that even if there is a problem, then we will be able to avoid those problems. And just like many problems uh, in Russia, they can avoid uh, different uh, blocks uh, and different barriers, etc. This is life, and so life it cannot be just uh, simple. If you don't have any problems, uh, then apparently you are dead. So everything is going to be absolutely fine. I think that it's uh, very interesting to say uh, the following thing. Very often uh, when they ask about so much, uh, yes, uh, well, actually people ask questions about sanctions. Uh, uh, Alexander, could you please say a few words about that? I think it's not about shares, but it's about uh, just a uh, uh, possibility to exist in sanction time. So, briefly speaking, uh, today uh, the head of uh, the special economic zone they admitted uh, solar is uh, one of the most viable projects within this uh, uh, special economic zone. Why? Because uh, the main technological equipment, engineering equipment uh, uh, sanctioned, uh, yes, already sanctioned, uh, we uh, bought it uh, in advance. And now it is uh, just uh, uh, the construction site uh, behind the fence. Uh, and also we have uh, some equipment uh, at our suppliers, uh, and someone is supposed to also be responsible for that. But uh, uh, we can use it if we have knowledge, uh, skills, and competence, we know how to do that and so much we think that we have uh, uh, such uh, uh, competence and thank uh, to our cooperation with our partners uh, from different countries uh, with China through other stuff we understand uh, how to also uh, 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 supply uh, uh, our products to other countries even if Russia is uh, sanctioned and like I said we got united we represented uh, different uh, countries but we are united the items made by uh, uh, solar mush, they have a direct impact uh, on lives of, uh, I, I mean, the people, uh, if you use it. So we uh, there is a room for growth, and we know how to survive in the, these uh, adverse conditions, and we will be doing that successfully uh, well, uh, as long as we can. So we have uh, only 11 minutes left. I would like to ask you a question. So, patent that we received, uh, they are active at the international level or somewhere else? Uh, 
Я хочу узнать, патенты, которые мы получили, действуют на международном уровне или только в России? И если в России, то, то будут ли международный уровень? So the question is about the patents. Today, Yana Diplova, who is dealing with the patents, she gave uh, quite a detailed information about that. But uh, let's just uh, briefly mention that uh, the patents uh, that uh, we received today, uh, they uh, um, can be used within the territory of the Russian Federation. And as of today, it is enough uh, in order to meet uh, the requirements uh, 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 and also to meet the demands. Also, we have uh, some uh, um, scenarios uh, we could have. Uh, we can get patents also in other countries for example if uh, we uh, launch uh, products uh, there who's supposed to do that uh, well uh, we'll answer that question we just mean to say that uh, the building and so much company uh, they uh, just uh, uh, manufacturing and uh, designing engine so a customer uh, who will actually apply for a full cycle uh, uh, they will be selling uh, final products uh, within the territory they're interested in and uh, half of the patent will uh, be also done for this uh, uh, company just uh, to protect uh, the final products. So there could be different scenarios of cooperation, but what we have today, uh, well, it's enough for us. Uh, at the same time, you have to consider that uh, any company, uh, whether it's American company, Chinese company, Indian company, any company from uh, well, any country before they uh, launch a product uh, uh, internally or externally well first uh, they okay get acquainted uh, with the situation and so they find try to find out whether uh, they have a patent uh, product uh, abroad and it's not very good it's not coming for uh, to do that I mean to launch a product which already exists uh, and patented in another country and even if it happens, we know how to do that. So we have only eight minutes left. Uh, hello. Mm -hmm. hello, I'm from India, Dr. Karnataka State. I have the first invested in 2017. I took some 25,000 package. Now last month itself it has been completed. So now early started for the 50% uh, bonus. You can extend it to the backlog of uh, one month, two months of like that for the first investor. Uh, we need an interpreter. So we have invested in 2017. I took some four packages. Recently I completed 25,000 package. Okay. Now in the month of July they started 50% bonus. They can make a one month backlog so that I can open the 25,000 package and we can make it 35,000 package. That is one question. I'm for so I want to increase thirty five thousand because last month this is complete. So he says that in two thousand eighteen he first bought four packages. Right now he has uh, uh, like uh, twenty five thousand and uh, he wants uh, to uh, lift uh, this figure up to thirty five and in the framework of uh, this special action, I mean the offer that you had, is it possible to do that? And considering that the promo action is actually over, this promo offer. So finally, we have a uh, question about uh, shares. So this offer behind us, it was prolonged till the 1st of September, and you can uh, really uh, take part in it. Uh, the question is whether it can be increased or not. Well, I should say that yes, you can do that because on top of uh, this offer, we also have an intermediate investment uh, package for $35,000. And yes, we do have such a new package. That is um, why I should answer in the following manner. Yes, you can do this. So they want to uh, ask a uh, question about uh, the shares. How much you can 
be actually done in installments. We will answer this uh, question during the next conference. I don't have uh, an answer. If it is very important, uh, then we will tell you. But I can for sure tell you that it is uh, no less uh, that uh, the amount uh, that has been paid for uh, well, something was reserved, yes, I mean installments, uh, but as a rule, it is applied for current stages. Uh, not so many people uh, pay uh, during the first stage. As of today, I think that, well, uh, it's going to be like approximately 30. And I worked from uh, the amount uh, we work on right now, and that's my answer. So it's been our third conference. And when are we going to see Dmitry Alexandrovich? When is he going to attend our conference, at least one conference? When is it going to happen? Can you answer this question? So, Pavel has a very uh, good uh, answer for you. Qu uh, you should uh, ask uh, Dmitry Alexandrovich about that uh, during the webinar. Dmitry Alexandrovich, uh, he had uh, a working meeting today, quite a big one, a very complicated meeting with uh, his uh, uh, team. Uh, there were a lot of aspects, and after it was over, he went uh, for another one. And if we wait for him till tomorrow, probably he uh, will free some time for us. Uh, but I think that there is no sense to do that. Uh, I think that in future we will ask Dmitry Alexandrovich about that during the, I mean, this program expert time, and he will tell us what he thinks about that. So actually there are three questions. The first one, can we after, I mean, uh, payments, uh, I mean, all those installments, can we get uh, uh, the original copy of the documents? The second question, how many stages uh, are left there and so what works are we supposed to perform before the company starts its commercial uh, work? Uh, and so the third question, uh, what do you think, uh, what is the potential of the market of uh, the company? So after sales starts, how many years the company will be really profitable and uh, shareholders, stakeholders, uh, how many dividends we will be able to achieve? So uh, let's give a round of applause uh, to our interpreter so she remembers everything. As for the stages, uh, there are three of them. We have uh, three stages. Uh, right now, it is seventh uh, finance st stage of uh, financing, as uh, for. So <laughs> the interpreter remembers everything, but uh, I don't remember. Speaking about the original copy of the uh, documents, uh, every investor can order uh, such original copy, and it can be delivered by mail. It ca you can also have such a function in your personal account, so you can apply for this uh, function, and. Uh, and uh, I think that the next question is for you. What steps are we supposed to, to uh, take uh, before uh, we can talk about commercialization? And what about the payback period? I should say that uh, the question is really nice. Uh, speaking about uh, steps, uh, well, first we need uh, to finish the uh, construction. We need uh, to uh, put uh, uh, into operation. I mean, this building. After yes, uh, it, it needs to be commissioned. What does it mean? Uh, what what means uh, commissioned and what does it mean to? to I mean, to put uh, into operation. What's the difference between two? When we commission, uh, they allow us uh, to work. And when we put it into uh, operation, it means that uh, uh, we uh, uh, 
think about uh, the right capacity. Uh, we add people to that. Uh, there will be employees, uh, workers, etc. When we are done with this order, when we strike the deal, then we will get profits. Uh, so basically, this is uh, our plan for the near future. Speaking about some works that need to be done by that uh, uh, time. Well, this is uh, a full scope of works. Uh, of legal nature, we need to sign contracts. We need to to trade personnel. We also need to, to I mean, do a lot, a lot of things. But we are happy about one a very important aspect. In parallel to the construction, and it works in progress. So before uh, uh, it will be commissioned uh, uh, and uh, it will be handed over to state commission, uh, we will try to do our best to make it ready. So we have uh, two more questions, and that's it. We won't be able to listen to all the questions, it's uh, not possible, but uh, we will not uh, be uh, living just like that straight away. Uh, me and Alexander will be here and we will answer your questions, especially since uh, after that we are going to have quite a big meeting at the construction site. So let's ask uh, two more questions and that's it. So actually two questions. I think that uh, my colleague Victor has already asked you about that. So it's not quite clear to me when people will start receiving dividends. Uh, I'm quite uh, from far away and so there are a lot of people behind me and they want to know uh, uh, answer to this question. What about sanctions? Do you think that sanctions are going to affect the solar group and solar mash, at least uh, part of uh, its activities? And also here is the question. It is uh, related uh, to dividends. Is it go uh, anyhow affect the amount of dividends? Speaking about uh, dividends and payments, how does it work uh, after the building is uh, uh, put into operation, uh, uh, the company will be able to uh, work with the first order and then will receive the first result. Well, uh, the uh, reporting period is usually once a year, and if the, in the second uh, quarter 2023 uh, we uh, present uh, this building to a state uh, commission, then uh, you will need some time uh, for it uh, to uh, be put into operation, and then we'll be talking about concrete results in 2024. There is not so much uh, time left, uh, uh, and uh, but after state uh, Commission, uh, there will not be so much time by the end of the year. I don't know how fast we will be able to show the first results, uh, but uh, a lot will depend on that. Uh, 24, 25, I mean, these years, so for sure we're going to have some results and we're going to get uh, some dividends. Uh, but uh, we are living in a, in a very real world. Uh, it is not in a vacuum and we cannot make any exact predictions. We can make plans, but uh, the situation uh, might also change but on our uh, side uh, we're trying uh, to uh, make uh, uh, this more efficient and uh, to make sure that uh, we don't have any barriers of course everyone is interested in dividends uh, we know that uh, perfectly well of course everyone wanted uh, to have uh, uh, dividends uh, but uh, also wanted uh, to know how it all works so if you want to, to be satisfied with it uh, we need to, to think how it's uh, optimized it. So, uh, what about sanctions? Uh, Pavel, for example, we understand that this is financial company, and by the way, international one. So, 
should it be affected by sanctions? Well, I don't know why, So, but against uh, these um, difficult times we are living in, I should say that uh, Solo Group only found ways, special approaches and solutions uh, allowing uh, to continue activities uh, it is involved in. It means that experience competence, uh, knowledge, etc., and sometimes uh, uh, courage. Yes, it is there, and uh, it will help us uh, a lot. Uh, we will ha find a way to counteract uh, all those uh, adverse conditions, sanctions, and things like that. Thank you very much. That's what we will be doing. A last question. And so then I said, uh, uh, well, uh, any questions, uh, but uh, uh, out of on the margins of this event. Andrei, St. Petersburg, I'm an entrepreneur. I'm uh, really interested in uh, uh, patent uh, uh, with Tesla. What about that? And uh, this dispute. This is secret information. Here is the answer. Well, you know, right now we uh, have uh, different events uh, organized, but of course, a uh, solar masha is not. Uh, that focused on that. Uh, why? Because uh, we have to tackle other questions as well. They are more relevant for our work. But uh, there is one thing I would like to say. Uh, well, in such a situation, when we have uh, such problem, when Tesla, for example, has a problem with our patent, uh, it is not possible to take a product to the market with such a situation, and it doesn't want to do so. Well, we remember about this question, we are working on that, but so far we cannot give you any concrete details, and I think that it makes actually no sense to do that. Just a short question. Hello, uh, friends, uh, investors, I would like to say hello from Siberia, from cold Siberia, with bears. So, a short question. I, in this case, I am asking Pavel to, you know, to open this curtain, to lift it up. So, uh, Solar Marsh has a big number of offers and uh, they can also um, invest into some other works. So, here is the question how uh, fast it will be announced if we talk about some future projects uh, and what kind of areas we are talking about, industries, etc. So, I think that you understand the question. Yes, I do understand. As for a further uh, projects, I should say that, of course, so a group uh, worked with uh, finance will be talking, working with uh, some other investment projects and I hope that we'll keep on working with Sobo Marsh and Alexander uh, Dmitrievich uh, Durinov. Uh, there are all the preconditions uh, to that and I'm absolutely sure that the next project, at least one of the next project, for sure will be a project related uh, to the Slavyanka technology. I think that everybody would love it, uh, so we don't want to reject it. Uh, it would be uh, quite unreasonable to do that. And uh, we also keep on working with uh, other engineers um, with uh, different, uh, so to speak, uh, uh, enterprises. Uh, I wouldn't say that uh, we touched uh, upon this uh, issue a lot, but uh, I just uh, don't want to give any concrete uh, uh, details. Uh, I don't want to announce something official because uh, it uh, might uh, evolve and develop uh, otherwise. I also want to add a couple of words. So you think uh, you think that we only uh, have this building and then it is it? No, we have a lot of uh, work ahead, uh, so please do not distract uh, Pavel, there is a lot of work to do. Okay, very, very last question. Please uh, don't leave uh, because I'm going to uh, make some uh, announcements. Uh, yes, we're going to answer the question. 
Could you please uh, come over? We're gonna answer your question. Because you wanted to ask questions so much. So, question number one about uh, promo packages. We know that uh, monthly payment uh, is uh, paid after 30 days and then after 90 days it uh, cannot uh, be received. Uh, so, is it uh, the system is also applicable to promo packages? Well, this is for all the packages. I want to know if this particular promotion ends and I have an existing promotional package, maybe for example 5,000 package, and when the, promo, um, um, when the promo ends, can I increase my package and still have a higher bonus attached to it? And one more question, when the uh, uh, promo is over, if I have a package for 5,000 and if I have half of it, uh, can it be increased uh, under the conditions of uh, this uh, promo? So the last question. I think that you really wanted to ask a question. So today some figures were announced. 47 million uh, was collected in investments. So let's multiply it by 60. It means 2 billion, over 2 billion ruble. And Sobol Mash not long ago said that 1 billion, 1.7 billion was received to the account. So where is one billion something? And what do you think? Did you have lunch today during the conference? Okay, the, in fact, uh, the uh, answer is very simple. If you ever worked in financial sphere, then you have to understand that uh, in order, in form of investments, uh, attract a million, you have, by the way, Vitaly Avrianov, are you with us? So uh, he, uh, our IT director, he participated in attract investment for big IT companies and foundations, and he said that uh, the price of money, even in big investment funds, uh, it's uh, at least 20-30%. So it means that if you want in form of investment to get a million ruble, it means uh, that uh, you have uh, to spend 30,000 uh, just to invest in advertising. Otherwise, nobody will ever know about it, even if you mean to want to meet an investor and uh, also, uh, to treat uh, the investor with something, it also requires money. Or crowdfunding, for example, uh, the cost of the money there is 20%. Uh, uh, this is the statistics of crowdfunding platforms. Uh, so, uh, if you want uh, to collect uh, 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 like 10 million rubles, then you should have in your pocket 2 million that you will invest uh, in order to get these 10 million. This is uh, the conditions of capitalism. You have to invest uh, in advertisements uh, if you want to get more money. Uh, that's what this money was spent uh, on. I hope that I answered uh, your question. Yes, yeah, so that is apparent. Uh, absolutely. We have, uh, of course, uh, the price of the commission. I know that even if you pay with a card and commission, that uh, the bank uh, uh, takes 2% uh, from Pitorochka. And uh, here, in every system uh, that you use, uh, uh, well, actually takes away some money from you, at least, I mean, just a little bit. Uh, conference uh, the expensive. Yes, it's not for free. We have uh, five, ten conferences a month, uh, per month. Uh, uh, well, uh, what about referral payments? How many people raise their hands when they ask who are partners here? Well, at least half of you. If you are shy, don't raise your hands. So that is what this money is also spent on. There are no secrets in, well, as well, in fact. So personal account. It works right now very well, and we have uh, IT guys uh, working on that, so they also get salary, technical support, uh, 
uh, they also are supposed to get uh, some salary. So in order to make the system work, people should also eat something. Uh, and uh, this process, uh, they cost money. But here is the question, uh, can it be justified? Well, I think yes, because uh, this is a viable mechanism. We will answer it a little bit later on, and uh, we will answer this question for sure. But anyway, uh, this is quite clear. So I hope that uh, I answered your question. We need an interpreter. Well, that's for sure, for sure, last question. Please don't leave because we are going to take a group picture. Thank you very much, and I would like to thank Mitri Dinov for creating such uh, motors. Uh, but what about gas motor? If we talk about motors and something that is uh, designed and developed by uh, Mr. Duenov, uh, this is uh, just electric uh, uh, motor is uh, asynchronous. Uh, probably, well, of course, he has enough competence to do that, uh, not just asynchronous engines. Uh, but let's uh, still uh, finalize the project we are involved in right now. And uh, based uh, on the results, uh, we will might able to talk about some other projects as well, but right now we stayed focused on asynchronous uh, agents, uh, different uh, traction agents, uh, well, uh, it can be used for different instruments, can be used for other things as well. Well, actually, it can be used for different purposes. Thank you very much. And uh, on this positive note, uh, we finish our official part.